Can you hear me, guys? Can you hear me, guys? Can you hear me, guys? I hope you can hear me. Can anyone hear me? Respond to me. Can you hear me? <coughs> Perfect. Okay, give us a... Butch just had to use the restroom real quick, so he'll be in here in a minute. <laughs> and we're getting all the beers ready. <laughs> so you can see uh, me right here, I think. Hold on. We'll be ready right now. <laughs> we're being real assholes. We got a little latency on this, too, so... <laughs> Sorry, guys. Takes a minute. I got filthy here. See all the comments on there, Phil? On YouTube? Yeah. Right? Uh, you got the red light on? Red light's on. Can you hear me how to get a new VPN on my PlayStation? All right. Checking it. Check, 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 check. Can you hear that golden piss coming out in the hey, background? Huh? Dude, don't worry about that. You're live. <laughs> You're live. We're live. Oh, yeah. Everyone can, <laughs> everyone can hear us. We're live, Shane. So don't say anything fucked up. Yeah, so everybody can hear Butch pissing now. All right. <laughs> um, <laughs> do me a favor. What? Give me that, that uh, the mouse. Um, and then there's on one of the, there's a wireless dongle on the, um, turn it sideways. Be careful, though. Don't get, don't plug it. See the wireless key, the wireless USB? Yeah. yeah. Now give me that one. You want it? Yeah. Can you see the comments? Click ahead and it'll help you. Yeah, I will. Same page now. Thanks, Corey. Appreciate yeah, it, bro. Have a yeah. good show. Yeah, Thank you. See you guys soon. Thank you from Cor Corey from, what is it called? Lumpia what? Lumpia Bay. Lumpia what? Lumpia Bay. Like Salt Bay? Lumpia Bay. Uh, yeah. uh, check out that on Instagram. They made us okay. all kinds of yummy lumpias. Um, <laughs> yeah. My buddy Corey. So uh, let me just Thanks get this. Thank you guys. Hey, thank you guys. Yeah, thank Take you. care, dude. <clears throat> all right. Hot? Yep, right here. There's the goat. All He's right. got some stuff here to show us. Um, Do I put this stuff on? Oh uh, yeah, put the headphones on. And uh, I guess this is not too much. Too much. Can you hear everything? Okay, Butch. I can hear you. Yes. Can you hear me? No. Nope. Can you hear me now? Okay. Uh, Shane, you can hear. I'm sure you guys can all hear yourself. Yes. So when you do speak in and ask a question, just lean into the mic. You can close that back door and pull the curtains, the nasty curtains. See all those nasty curtains right there? Just pull them on both sides. Yeah, it's Ron Jeremy filming myself. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry for all the. Uh, for keeping it live. Yeah, for keeping it live. This is live as shit. You guys are gonna get right now, really live. Um. All right, I'm gonna check in with on Instagram or on YouTube. Make sure everyone could uh, hear what we're doing. <coughs> Welcome to Cast and Crank Podcast. Um, it's delayed, so I don't want you two looking at that screen. Why not? That's not. That's it's, it's going to be late. I'm just letting you know. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so what what we're going to do? I'll start right off. So he's going to write down the best ones. He, we're going to write down the questions uh, when we ask Butch. Do not ask questions yet. Wait. If you could hear this, please wait until probably I'm going to say 45 mm -hmm. minutes, and we have a lot to talk about before we ask the questions. But um. Welcome to Cast and Crank. I have two okay dudes and an amazing guy to my right, right here, the goat, Butch Brown. 
<laughs> you can say hi, Butch, if you'd like. Say hi, hey, everybody. <laughs> I'm here. Um, you, you need a fan in here. <laughs> Dude, it's hot as shit. I'm so sorry. It is. <laughs> oh, that's why there's a Modelo there to cool you down, Butch. But um, I got it. So the way we're going to do it, like I said, uh, it's going to be um, ask the questions a little later. We're going to do a lot of Q&A. And uh, oh, gosh, just everything's not going right. I'm sorry, guys. I'm a horrible engineer guy. So, um, yeah. So let's start off with the podcast. You guys can all hear us, apparently, because uh, Shane and, and, um, and uh, uh, Phil are checking on that. So we're going to start right off. So the first thing we're going to talk about right off the bat is let's talk about the SU drop and what you The raffle, huh? Uh, yeah, this is for the raffle. So the one he's going to show you right now is a tuned okay. one. Really can't see it unless you can pull it out. Yeah, go ahead and pull it out. That's all I meant. Anyways, it's it's sort of carpy looking in a way. It's a great bait, but uh, if you want one of these, you got to get on it pretty quick because I heard that they're down to like the last thirty or forty of them, and they sold like close to seven hundred of them yesterday. And this bait here is not going to be around after they're out of them. Uh, they might never come back and they might come back in about four or five years. They'll probably make a new color after this. So if it's, uh, something you want in your arsenal, uh, you need to snap it up pretty quick and you can go to, uh, swimbaitunderground.com. Uh, so but excellent quiet. bait, matte finish, huh? gloss, 250. The... This one happens to be tuned up. Is that better guys right here? Here's a little more sound for you. If Which you can is, hear it. Um, so is this where I should be looking? Uh, no, it doesn't matter where you're looking. Okay. This, I'm such a, I'm a fucking rookie on this shit. So <laughs> you can look there. It's fine. Um, this is your second time around with this bait. Yes. Okay. Yes. Um, what, I don't think we talked about what gave you the color pattern for that one. Actually, they, uh, just asked and got a few suggestions. They designed this color pretty much on their own, but I just told them how to go about getting there uh with samples and um and slowly getting it the way that they want it and then i i told them i go you know why don't you just break it up and go with a matte finish and a and a gloss finish and that way you don't have all this this one kind of thing and the gloss i like to fish in the clearer water and the matte finish i fish in a little bit of the stained water uh seems to be best for me and like any other depths i always change the hooks out on it uh if you fish for striper and stuff, I don't think you need to do that. But for bass, I happen to like the Gamagatsu round bends on there. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a pretty neat bait. It looks great in the water. I ha had a chance to fish it about four times before the release because I lost almost all of them that I had. <laughs> and, uh, you know, I'm not one to go. I don't worry about losing baits that much. You know, it happens. That's a big thing you got to do when you're swim bait yeah. fishing to make sure that you, it don't matter, right? You, well, you got to fish it like you're going to lose it, I fish deep, right? you know, so I lose stuff deep. I have lure retrievers, but, you know, that works sometimes, but not all the <clears> time. <throat> uh, or I'll have a day where I'm just not checking my knot, and I go through like four or five hours, and off it goes into the distance, you know. <laughs> But I usually check every hour and retie or do something before I move the boat again. Um, but I did fish the bait. I caught fish on the bait the last, you know, month here that I had it. But no, no big fish, you know. But uh, plenty of action. You know, what, as far uh, as small stuff. What do you think changed recently, like that you haven't been able to catch what you want to? Um, it was a weird year because the water temp stayed the same uh like at 58 degrees in the lakes that i like to fish from november till into march and i think that the problem that we had was the fish were in a fall pattern and they were more suspended than getting into a winter pattern and it never changed they didn't know they were didn't know where to go 
you know they weren't sure what was happening and then uh, like at the one lake I liked the fish they already blue stoned and and sprayed the toolies and uh, you know that screwed it up for a couple of weeks it's still messed up I fished today I never got bit damn you that's know. no good <laughs> well it's part of the deal though yeah you know it is what it is <clears throat> how I mean you keep grinding over and over for for this and at your local lake yeah um the other thing i really want to talk about which i thought was super cool was the uh, article mm -hmm. um how did that come about and uh when did it start that was a was approached to me by a, a guy that fishes the lake and he worked for the la times and we became friends He's a kayak fisherman. He was a float tuber, but he was a nice guy, and I didn't mind helping him out, you know, with spinner baits and things like that. He, you know, uh, but he was always there, and he was usually one of the first two in line. So that's how I got to know him. And he he started talking to me, and he remembered me from years back when he he talked to me on the bank, and I didn't know it, but he said that I was nice to him and turned him on where some fish were and stuff like that. And he said, you know, uh, you need to have, he's come over to my house and, you know, I gave him a, a personal net that I use, you know, that I stocked up on before they quit making them <laughs> and, you know, try to, try to help him out. You know, he's a super nice guy. And, uh, he, uh, he said, I want to, I want to do something. I want to make a story, but not about just the bass fishing but about the whole beginning and the story through it and where you're at today with it you know and they uh eventually as time went on he, he started writing stuff and and uh and then he 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 said i i have to do facts check and so he would call people that uh or in the industry like you and Gilbert and Optimum and Okamura and and Ben and people like that and I told them that I won't I'm not the guy that's gonna call somebody and tell them hey say something good about me just go ahead do your facts check and then we'll go from there and he did and uh, everything was you know couldn't be better um, but then he came over and uh, he wanted to see some of the old footage I had and stuff like that, and he was amazed at uh, how many tapes I had stored away. Uh, and then eventually he set it up and got it through his uh, higher ups in the New York or the uh, L.A. Times, and they uh, they uh, sent out a film crew the first time and did stuff with the drone, and I got one bite that day and got skunked <laughs> but i had 17 boats around me so it pretty much after the first half hour i got bombarded and then uh and then they wanted a photographer out there and that was a two-day thing with the photographer you know and they just snapping thousands of pictures trying to get the right one and flying drones and stuff like that and then it all just sort of came together and he he told me he uh this was two weeks ago all that went down and then he called me last Saturday and he said it's gonna happen it's all been redone everybody is on board and you're gonna be on the front page and he he did an archive search and he said that they haven't done anything with bass fishing in probably 30 years and um, and lo and behold I got up Monday morning <laughs> and uh, I had already went to work and wondered where you could get a newspaper because it's not like that anymore. You don't go to a newsstand in front of Denny's or something and get a newspaper. And, you know, and if, if they did, well, then I would have put my 50 cents in and taken the whole <laughs> rack like the old days, you know, or whatever. But uh, I went into 7-Eleven and they get three. And when I left for work in the morning, I, I had to work in Chatsworth. So I had to, you know, from Castaic. So I hit the first 7-Eleven there on Sepulveda and Rinaldi area and then uh, they had three and then I, they charged me like 12 bucks I'm like <laughs> holy moly and then I went down to the next one down there around DeSoto and uh, they had three and I bought those three 
And then I went to one on Topanga and Devonshire, and they had three. And believe it or not, they were all three different prices from $9 to $12. <laughs> so how that works, I don't know. But, yeah. But, uh, you know, when I first got there and I saw it, I'm looking at the headline there. And he had already screenshotted what it was going to look like to me. But then I realized I'm, you know, we have the Ukraine stuff going on. We have the, the protesters for the abortion. We have this college thing. And then right in the middle on the front page is me. And I'm like, that's that's pretty cool. And then I started getting phone calls from people I worked for 20 years ago that I haven't talked to in 20 or 30 years. That you know, people out in Beverly Hills and Malibu, and people that you would expect to read the L.A. Times every morning. And it, and it, they just started calling me. My regular friends, they didn't they didn't call me. You know, they knew, <laughs> hey, but, but you got they some didn't fucking me, asshole these, regular friends. These right? people were <laughs> amazed, amazed that that here is their drywall man on the cover of the L.A. Times. And uh, so that was pretty cool that they still have my number and they call me back for all that kind of stuff. But uh, but you got to remember, this is one thing I'm going to say you are. It's it's you're the uh, not only are the goat, you're like the punk rock fisherman. You know what I'm saying? You're like the guy that went his own path. So I, I feel like that's, I feel like you, uh, so many young people could relate to you because you kind of pretty much did, said fuck you to everyone and did your own path. I did my so own So you know what I'm thing. saying? So I feel like that's the big difference is like, okay, um, you, you carved your own path. Not many people have done that these days, mm -hmm. especially with YouTube and stuff. You've done it on your own, your own way. You, you didn't do it for money. No, it was never you know for saying? money, and and most of the stuff played out. Uh, it just played out that way, you know, like the internet stuff and and YouTube and Facebook. You know, it was just stuff I was playing with, but it just evolved into something, just like, you know, uh, recently with Tackle Warehouse and doing a shoot with them and doing it with uh, Swimbait Underground and doing it with this has been a busy year for me and doing it with the LA Times it's like I didn't solicit this I didn't do anything it was all out of reputation and there is a story to be told because you know people think that you as you as you swim bait and back in the old days things were really really good and you know I stuck with a lake that had plenty of big fish and I didn't go look for fish to find fish and I kept my mouth shut and we didn't have internet okay <laughs> hey I would number, call the, the tip number one guys he kept his mouth shut yeah I would call <laughs> the guys in the bushes watching you though yeah yeah, yeah. but when you speak I kept it in a tight on it a tight oh. group of friends <laughs> that that knew what was going on and usually when I had pictures taken it was usually by lifeguards uh, a couple times I hit girls that were sunbathing on the beach because they're the only ones around. There's nobody on the lake, you know, and, and I need to get want to get a picture of my big fish and or a kid that's fishing by the dock. You know, I'll ask him to take my pictures and stuff. So that's that's how it all went down. And, you know, the the fish were really healthy, big and fat. And then as you have seen what happened when the trout stocks quit happening in a lot of our lakes a lot of the guys that used to be old school swim baiters just sort of dropped off the face of the earth they all disappeared they all became a tournament fisherman drop shot fisherman whatever you want to call it but they really don't exist now and i think you just have to adapt you have to go through the lumps and bumps figure out what they're eating again they're probably not going to be as big as they were but the biggest fish I got last year out of the lake that was a non-trout lake was 13 pounds. So they do, they, there are in there, and I've hooked a couple that are, that, and I've seen a couple at another lake that are in, in the teener range, and they used to be the big fish lakes. But, uh, you know, I just keep going with the grind. You know, I get skunked, whatever. But, it, you know, at my age now, you know, I, I did it really hard for, you know 30 years probably and you know i'm sort of at peace with it all now you know uh you know you you can't be on top of the world and you can't be number one forever kevin van damme's not nobody is but you can be you can keep plugging away at it and you know 
I, I still have it deep in my heart. I still get the same excitement when I hook fish and stuff. And I, I always want to catch that double digit fish. And I know that's very doable, but whether or not I'm going to catch that world record, like I thought I was going to catch at one time or we don't want to hear you talk like this pounder. Bitch. This is like Kobe going, I'm done playing basketball. We don't want to hear that. We're, you're still going to catch that. Fucking... Oh, I'm not done, but I have to pick my lakes. You have to yeah. be strategic on what you're doing. That's why I, you know, tend to, when I'm thinking that way, I tend to run up towards NorCal a little bit because I know they have it. But there they're, they're a lot of people up there fishing. They're heavily pressured lakes, and you sort of need to be, you sort of need to be around there to fish a lot to, to, to be on them. You know, if you go up for just a couple of days here and there, it's, you know, it's a hit and miss. You got to pick out your moon phase and and your your time when you can go. But uh, you know, every time I go fishing, every time I get bit, I'm thinking of ten pounders, and I'm I I get them. You know, last year I think I had twenty four over over ten. And I 10 and I range. I feel like that accomplishment is a kind of different than some of these other places. Like, and I'm not taking anything away from, you know, the Josh Jones or the Ben Millikens, but I mean, your pressure here is. Oh, in Southern California is different. And another thing I would, I'd like to talk about is, um, what did they say? Tell me what they fucking said. If I listen to a Butch Brown interview under my pillow, when I fall asleep, well, I embody the Butch Brown mojo. <laughs> <laughs> By <I> osmosis. <laughs> hey, there's some funny, if there's funny ones, you got to tell us. We need to get even, <laughs> Well, somebody wants to know the, this, the word for when they need to take a shot. During what's the, the, what's the, the magic word? The magic, the word magic drinking word. What's the magic drinking word? That everybody has to take a shot. I don't know. <laughs> double digit. Double digit. No, that's double, double digit. digit. Here. Double, digit, double digit, guys. Double digit. <laughs> you know, swim baits it originally were designed, uh, it, our big baits were designed to catch the biggest fish that you can catch, you know, but now it's evolved into catching a different variety of sizes of fishes, you know, because the baits have gotten smaller. And I, and this bigger. is, a, and a, as a side note, I'm cutting you off. Sorry, you fucking guys. Fuck you. Um, I, I want to ask you is now before a respectable swim bait fish would be like 12, 13, 14 pounds, mm -hmm. 15 pounds. It's not going to happen like that anymore. Everyone knows that because they're just not, it's hard to pressure. Mm -hmm. So like, I feel like a respectable swim bait fish has came down. Maybe the sevens and eights is like, that's a pretty nice fish. That's a nice fish. Right? Yeah. But, I mean, you get people that maybe would be like, well, I don't want to post this. I'm like, dude, if I seen someone post a fucking seven, I'd be – that's awesome. If you're catching sevens and eights all days, I'd be happy as well doing that. Oh, yeah. You know? Oh, yeah. No, they're a fish to hold in your hand, that's for sure. Um, but, uh, yeah, you know, I uh, – I get a lot of big followers. It's just getting them to commit, you know, because they've they've been a little conditioned here and there. They're a little more leery. I make longer casts now than I ever used to, um, you know, to just sort of keep keep the bites away from the boat if I can, because uh, they get a little little boat shy here and there. And it that's I've gotten like I lost one about three weeks ago. Uh, that was probably about 12 pounds, and it, it, as soon as I turned the handle, he was on, and he came straight up out of the water and threw the bait. What bait? Know. What was that on? What were you throwing? That's down? on my homemade cart bait. The new one. You just you posted a picture that you had to I make. I might own. show a picture here and there, but I don't let anybody. <laughs> it's not new. Have any? <laughs> Is that the gill on the cart? What yeah. the fuck? I got man? my this own. Keeps dropping you out. know, you, uh, you have to match the hatch. You know, if you're fishing lakes that they they eat bluegill, bass, and carp, that's that's sort of what you need to start throwing there. They they always eat the trout color, but but I think the bigger ones get get uh, more fooled on the other stuff. You know, crappie baits. You know, we you know we have a crappie 250 that's going to be coming out pretty soon. So uh, yeah. That's a good question. I got the technical difficulties. <clears throat> I think the name's Kai. When fish aren't biting, would you suggest downsizing your presentation or upsizing it? I just keep sticking with what I got. I never downsize anything. The only time I downsize is when I take my grandkids out and they want to catch some fish. And that's the only time I downsize. I don't really throw the 175, but I can catch smallmouth on it. I can go, you know, all that kind of stuff. I can get a lot of bites on it. But I stick with the big stuff. 
And have you ever do tune the one seventy fives as well? Yeah, I did, but I don't have to now because they swim really nice. Really? Since they changed okay. the uh, skin skin on them and everything, they're they're a nice bait. They they changed the the wading inside. Yeah. How much? How many people messaged you after you? Showed the tuning video on Tackle Warehouse. <laughs> I get uh, <laughs> probably ten a day, but uh, it's it's gotten so crazy that I don't look at my. Uh, I I need time to myself. I want to go fishing, so I uh, you know if it's if it's through a friend that's already had one tune and they text me, I just tell them send it and then we'll go from there. <laughs> uh, but when I get on Facebook, I sort of got to be in the mood to look at them. Uh, I try to you know enjoy myself a little bit more because the the internet can be super addicting trying to answer every question that everybody asks and everything and it takes you away from your fishing time and and other things you know and maybe people might think you'd come off like a, a asshole to, i mean anyone it's like how how do you answer you know 100 dms you know like for a guy well, like you, if you i don't get... know them you know and they leave a message it's it's not like it's an office <laughs> where you know this is this is what i do for yeah. a living i don't make money on tuning the baits you know and shipping now has gotten to be 13 bucks 14 bucks and i i tell them I, you know they send me 20 dollars. the materials cost me probably five with the different foams and stuff i use an hour of my time uh, co combination of everything. I take the bait to the lake. I test it to make sure it's dialed you in. You really take it to the lake Every and test bait it? Every bait I take shit. to the lake and test. Yes. And then I put the hooks on there. They're another two bucks a piece. So, And then I got to drive seven miles, or five miles to the post office and back. Okay, but why, so why now can't... I'm in the hole. <laughs> you know, I'm, I do it because I want, I, I never thought that I would have my name on a bait in my entire life and I said that if when that started to happen that I would if somebody was having a problem with the bait that I would make sh they could send it to me and I will make sure that that bait swims ah, good for them because I awesome, want them to bitch. catch fish that's awesome. and that's how it all started it never came it never was a money thing and it, at the beginning it was like just send it to me I'll fix it and I'll send it back buy me a six pack that's it yeah well <laughs> no they didn't they wouldn't send me anything and then at the end of the year when i'm doing all my taxes and stuff well i just spent twenty five hundred dollars on shipping you know <laughs> and then all of a sudden I'll, I'll find out that i i tune baits for certain guys and the next thing i know they're they're flipping them you know Ooh, they get it to, they get it other. tuned for free and then they say it's a butch brown tune how much is a tune it, butch brown and i didn't right charge them a that's dime a no no how much is that's a tune a no -no. butch brown bait right i'll now. look it up Hey, look You're up Swimbo Jones. Well, you know, I have guys that are that I Shut do up, have guys that are really generous, and they just stick a, a hundred dollar bill in there, you know, dude, and and they they want it done, you know. Uh, but if it's a kid and he doesn't have a lot of money, um, you know, I I will take it and fix it and send it to him. But the problem that we have also on the internet is we don't know who's a kid and who's not a kid because I've agree. had guys that that did that. You, know, you thought they're a kid and they're yeah, not. Yeah, well, they come off like they're a kid, and then you find out that they're somebody, you know, they're a 35, 40-year-old man, <laughs> you know? So, yeah. you know, that, that sort of pisses you off a little bit, you know? Have you ever thought of just having, you know, uh, depths actually make the bait tuned, or you just can't do it because Well, there's you a can't little... do it with the fixed pins. The first ones that they sent me of the prototypes when they got to the, the PVC ones had adjustable screws, Okay, and that's that's a lot lot of where it's at. Theirs are fixed, and they think differently than we do in 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 the United States when it comes to the way the bait's supposed to swim. They're looking at the bait like an escape action kind of thing, where you you would jerk it up and and you'd move it a little bit and you'd pause it, and that's how they look at the bait. When we here in the United States look at the bait we look at the way that it glides and how graceful it is like you know when you look at the trout that gets stocked you go to the hatchery they're just so so smooth and 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 everything and um that's what i want the bait to do so we, it's like I the, do the I, escape it makes thing, sense yes but so. uh i still want it to swim when it's down deep and i'm just rolling it slow 
you know you roll the 250 slow butch oh you're very slow <laughs> yeah that's some of the best stuff there is yeah yeah and it's usually the bite is usually the the lightest hit you'll ever have because i think that they're they're tracking it and then when they eat it they're still got the momentum coming forward and all you feel is this either the line slacks off or it's just this little little tap and those are usually the biggest fish of all you know um but yeah it was more to i try want to try to be good with everybody you know and and help help everybody out you know i have several kids that i i sort of mentor around that are starting out and you know and and i'll give them my time and answer their questions and you know help them out because you know they're they're in junior high school or they high don't school know anything yeah you know yeah. and uh you know like i got uh this this kid up in uh up at lake casitas and uh he wanted a 250 and he wanted to pay for it i gave him a couple bluegill baits so he he got a couple of my personal baits uh -oh. but he uh he i told him give me a 100 bucks and I'll, I'll put one in the mailbox and then his mom loves to bake so when i when i'm there <laughs> there's this uh banana bread loaf in there for me and so it uh, it works out pretty good but he bank fishes up there and and uh you know try to help him out the best i can yeah you know uh, answer his questions in fact i talked to him on the way up here because he said he was going to call in oh great so, yeah uh um, how's Casitas been treating you? It it has good days and it has bad days. Uh, you know, the beginning of the year uh, was uh, like every three trips. I wouldn't connect until every three trips. And then I'd have like a day where I'd get two or three. Um, you know, uh, I want to get a modern day 10 out of there. That's, that's your goal why, right now? That's why, I, that's my goal up there. You know, and right now it costs me a hundred dollars to drive there and back, even yeah. though I'm only sixty three miles away. It costs me a hundred bucks a day just to go there and fish and come back. I have yearlies and stuff. But last year in January, well the bite was off the hook and I saw I saw teener fish swimming around, you know. Uh during the summer I had fish in the eight pound class, but I saw them. I they exist in there. Um, but like I said, that water temperature there also same scenario, 58 degrees from November until March. It stayed that cooler temperature. It didn't dip down to 52 or 50 or 49 like it normally does when they. That's when they start to go down. And mm -hmm. I think that they were suspended out off points. Yeah, yeah. And they were in a fall a fall mode, and they just stayed in that mode. And I think next year will probably be. It'll be a different scenario, and I've seen this in my life, you know, with the the you know fishing the lower lake and stuff like that. You know, every year is a little bit different, different location um, where they're going to be. You know, uh, there's key areas, but uh, the patterns change. You need to, but right. you, you go back in time to because you <laughs> have so many years invested in the lake that you start putting things together like. You know, there was this time when the wind picked up from the south, 11 o'clock in the afternoon. I was on this side of the humps, and I'm throwing off of there, and it was just phenomenal. And then that scenario doesn't happen for a long time. Then you go back to it, and the fish are there. Or like, are you? Is this all mental, mental records as well, or is it, you're, you're writing this down? No, I I remember it. Remember all. everything? Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, I don't need to. to <laughs> nah. I know I got the funniest picture from you and Fred, my buddy Fred Clinshaw. He's a guide up there. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's hilarious. You guys flipping me off. I'm like, yeah. oh, this is the best picture in the morning I could ever see. <laughs> yeah, he came over in the morning when he was launching there, and a lot of times, as soon as I launch the boat, I can get a four or six pounder right off the back of the boat. You know, throwing right in that uh, launch ramp area. But uh, you know, but I'll tell you what, they stocked trout up there uh, about three, four weeks ago and for the kids to catch yeah and they were pound and a half to probably five pounds there were some big ones and i didn't get up there they opened the pen up on sunday i think or saturday and i went i was thinking okay i'm gonna go up and throw the big stuff and uh i got up there on monday and there was nothing in the general marina area but i went straight across the lake and started going up the shoreline and i'd see these these trout and like i saw half a dozen of them they'd be up 
shallow and they'd be on their side in the weeds and they'd be breathing and as soon as I'd get up to them I'd spook them with my rod and every one of them had a chomp mark or a hit mark oh, man. so they were on them yeah there was no question about it and I've seen the chasers so um, if we could start getting that stuff back in the lakes then we'll be back on top of the game I, you know it's it's sad to fish a lake for 40 years almost and go through 30 years of things that haven't changed yeah you know what i mean um and then this happens you know and then you want to move on but uh, i will be you know i'll retire here and i'll move someplace but i'll move someplace good uh, I'd love my to wife see you... won't go to Texas. Yeah, that's so... where I want to see you go. Yeah, I think if you went to Texas, in fact, I was to... going to go to Ivy two years ago and spend a couple of weeks up there because oh, I knew there was man. fish up there. I heard through some people. Yeah. I even have it, the topo map and everything. Up yeah, there. but uh, I'm not the guy that's going to go out with the uh, sonar and uh, try to find those fish with the uh, that what is it that. That was one of the questions that they're thing. asking. The last uh, let's uh, we'll we'll hold on to that question because that's a great question. I want to go deep into that, but no, I get what you're saying. I just uh, this camera's fucking on me. Hold on. Uh, well, more technical difficulties, guys. The scene keeps fucking dropping out on me, so. We'll see what we do. I'm going to have to make this to one camera and show just like the other one. We'll see. But, um, uh, yeah, I want to get to that question, too, because that's one we never got to talk to. Talk about fucking piece of shit. Um, let's fix this. You want to have them keep asking questions? Uh, we're, we're just take that one, and, and can you do me a favor and just pull it out, the zoom on it? Sorry, guys. We're, we're live. We're doing this fucking live. There's a zoom. Yeah, just pull it out. It should be one way or the other. Oh no, it's on the side, like a little, a little like a, like right here. I see this one. Right, there you go, a little more, a little more. Keep going. Just hold it down. It'll pull out. Aren't, there you go, the other way. The other way. Keep going. Keep going. It's all the way. Yeah. It's all the way. No. Okay, then focus it a little. Man, I'm a fucking rookie. Other way. There you go. Hold on, back the other way a little. And then kick, kick it towards Butch, the whole camera. There you go. <laughs> Pull it this way a little more towards me, but try to fit us all in if you can. A little more, a little more, a little more, a little more. Keep going. And a little more, a little more, a little more. All right, that's going to have to be it. Yay. This is how we're doing it, guys. Fucking sorry. <laughs> sorry, this is how we're going to have to do it. Is. Yeah, it is what it is. This is an audio podcast, so fuck you guys. Live. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, that, I, that's something I, I do want to talk about is, is the uh, live scope thing because I feel like I've heard so many different opinions and I feel like the West coast guys opinions are way different than, uh, everyone else's opinions. But, um, let's talk about something big that you're doing. Cause I, we, we, uh, I want to get into this as well. So you teamed up with SU to do something cool. Yes. With your boat. Let's kind of talk about that. And, and, uh, you can tell them what, what you're going to do. Well, what we're doing right now is they, uh, they found a, a boat just like mine and they uh, they just sold these T-shirts that have my, you know, the boat on the back, and uh, they filmed the street where I caught the, got bought the boat, and everything. And and my boat to me is priceless because I know it's caught more double-digit bass than any boat out there. You know, as far as I'm concerned, it should be mounted on a wall or <laughs> it should be in the the fishing hall of fame. You know, it is yeah. what it is. It's raw. Um, but they purchased, they found a 1966 Alumacraft, I think it was in Kentucky. And the guy, I, I believe they paid around 1500 bucks for it with a motor and a trailer. And then uh, they, they told me, they, first they said, hey, Butch, is this your boat? And I said, yeah, it is. They go, we want to buy this boat and we want to make this boat a replica of the boat that you have now stickers and everything and we're going to raffle it off for ch to a charity and donate the money to the charity and give the boat away and i said that's that's perfect man yeah. i said i'll be the guy to rig it and do everything paint it get it all dialed in well the boat they got is immaculate 
I mean, it's it's incredible. What, what about the trailer? The trailer was a piece of shit. <laughs> The trailer. I heard about the, it. That's what I got. The guy, the guy towed it from Kentucky. It had IROC wheels on it. It was homemade from the 40s. It looked like a farmer made it. And when it got put in the driveway, and it cost them fifteen or eighteen hundred bucks to ship it, so they already got three thousand invested in an aluminum boat with nothing on it. Yeah. But it did have a Mercury outboard, and the Mercury, I fired it right up as soon as I got it, and it, it works. Really? It's a good motor. Oh, nice. Yeah. And I text them back, and I go, the wheel's falling off. You know, the bearings were gone. I can't believe... It should have fallen off on the freeway. <laughs> the guy drove it from there to here. I, I, I don't know what he was... This 1940s trailer kind of thing. And I told him, I said, this trailer's not going to work, man. I go, we got to do... I go, can I get rid of this trailer? And they, they, they said, yeah, do what you can do. So I went out with my uh, Makita grinder, and I chopped it up into 15 pieces, axle everything, and uh, kept putting a couple pieces in the trash can every <laughs> trash day. And it's, it's gone. Right. <laughs> it's history. It had a dog leash that tied the bow up to the front. Oh, it shit. didn't have a crank. And then it had another dog leash that wrapped around this piece of wood that was supposed to be holding the center keel up in the bow. And that was on like flopping on the ground. He probably drug that for 1,500 miles. And uh, it was just really a doozy. Uh, yeah, it was a piece of junk. But anyways, we're going to put the same sonar on there, same live well system, same carpet, complete same design. Same trolling motor. Uh, trolling motor doctor is uh, Nick is building a. Oh, is he really? Yeah. He, oh, nice. Well, see, I like the old school tours. The uh, I like the uh, the twenty four volt. Is that the cable dri driven one? Okay. Yeah, they were top of the line once. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I like that one for the front because I don't need three batteries. But now with lithium, you could have three batteries in the front. But uh, he will rebuild one and make it like a brand new one for me. And I already have one spare in my garage for when the one I have now takes crap. But he, you know, if he can find the parts and get it, he can, you know, the the blank itself, he'll he'll rebuild it. It'll, oh, it's a five hundred dollar deal, but it's, yeah. it's to me it's worth it because I don't want spot lock on the little boat. No, the big boat, I I get it. It's, yeah. a, it's a benefit. But uh, on the little boat, I don't need that. Yeah. So, uh, anyways, there's no time as far as when this is going to happen. Hopefully by mid to end, end of summer, because I gotta donate That's all my time to work. put it together. That is a together. shitload of work. To but I've done it so many times in my life. You know, I know where the plumbing needs to go. I know how to make the deck secure. You know, I use aluminum. You know, everything. So it's, uh, you know, I've rebuilt my boat probably six or seven times yeah. in my life until I finally got it, what I would call perfect. Are you, you use a, the decking, using all wood and then fiberglassing no. it? No. Or what are you using? The deck is done with uh, like a, 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 a half inch, less than half inch marine gate grade plywood, or okay. plywood. But then I laminate that with uh, a sheet of aluminum. Oh wow! Yeah, so that way the water doesn't rot it out because the decks used to rot because yeah. the you know the carpet gets soaked up and then about a year or two later yeah you know the deck's a piece of junk. Well, this now it's solid as could be, you know. So everything is lined and and cased in uh, in uh, aluminum and it's I keep it as light as possible, so uh, it works pretty good. And the live well system it's a it's a hundred quart. And this cooler. is the live well system you designed as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it wow. holds big fish. It's yeah. going to be cool to see. Your, your, I think, are you guys going to kind of like document it with the video? As yeah, well? I'll keep track of everything as it goes. I The day that I got rid of the trailer, I looked on Craigslist. <laughs> and there was a guy in uh, Saugus. And he's got a trailer for sale. 700 bucks, And it was beautiful. But I got there and it was made for a 12-foot boat. But then he takes me to the back. He goes, I got another trailer for sale, too. And he's got this Boston Whaler back there. And it's this, almost the same trailer I have. What size and Boston goes, Whaler was that? Butch? He goes, I'll sell you that trailer if you want that one. I just got to take the Whaler off of it. I go, yeah, I'll, how much? I go, I got to paint it and do some stuff to it. He goes, ah, 400 bucks. You know, but it's all there. It's, you know, it's really good shape. Yeah. So, uh, so he's 
I'll probably pick that up next week from him. That's and then start uh, working on it. That's super cool. And the 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 uh, foundation they're going to go to with that is tilt the same as uh, mm-hmm. we we did with our toy drive, which uh, we're going to be announcing that pretty soon as well. I got to just make sure there's no conflicts with anyone else, like toxic day and stuff. But we're going to do the toy drive again this year and try to make it bigger and try to break, you know, the uh, ten thousand mark and then the thousand mark in toys this year, mm-hmm. and uh, do something big again. But the foundation that it's going to is really cool. Tilt Outdoors. They've been on the podcast before. So when I heard about this, I was stoked because uh, they're, they're really cool. Those guys, they, if you, if you don't know about them, they actually moved into the neighborhood mm-hmm. and, um, Oh my God, dude, this camera fucking went out now. Can you turn that one on and off? Oh, man, dude, I'm fucked on cameras. Today, ain't I? That's why, huh? Oh, uh, no, it's the, oh, it's the IC. Should Just turn it on and off. Later. I guess, yeah. Still professional. Um, professional. There we go. That's going to have to be first it for now. They want to know if this was your first podcast. Who said that? <laughs> oh, yeah, this is my first podcast I've ever done. Thanks. Like I said my whole life, I fucking hate video. Mm-hmm. Hate it. Audio is easy for me. I can just fucking make it go. Video, not so much. I still can't stop thinking about this aluminum boat with his Amish trailer. <laughs> <laughs> That's a wild trailer to have that trailer. Oh, like it that. was something, man. It, I had never seen. And the other wheel was uh, when Rob came over, he goes, the other one's falling off, too. And I'm sh- <laughs> I could shake it five inches. It was leaning like this in my driveway when, yeah. I, when I got I never, I never saw the guy drop it off. But, uh, you know, who'd think, you know, here you got this little boat like this, and you have all these rangers all these nice boats and yet you this boat here is in more videos of catching big fish than any other boat how about this and that it's boat, gonna be what it is that boat has probably more big fish than any other boat ever no doubt about it you know what i'm saying mm-hmm. that's crazy i've had more i've probably had 60 double digits caught in the back seat in that boat <laughs> by other people Fuck. you know that's wild yeah that's wild there's It'll be really cool, but the only thing that different I heard is you're going to put a regular engine on it, not We're, electric. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we cannot find that electric motor that I have. They they don't make that one anymore, and uh, most people, you know, are going to fish it in a Bigger in a lake. gas lake yeah. anyway. So it comes with a 15 uh, Merc, and uh, it it started right up. It was beautiful. Yeah. So uh, and I have a 20 on on mine because sometimes I'll take my little boat take everything out of it and i'll travel up to one of these norcal lakes with it uh not one of the big lakes but the smaller lakes and i prefer to fish out of that you know no, that's... And, and you can't find me when i'm out there <laughs> you know, my little black boat sits low and slow and you could look across the lake and and you won't see me and right. uh, that that helps you know and, and i i think one of the benefits about having being a swim baiting with a little boat like that is when you're sitting in the big bass boats or you're standing in them you figure it's two three feet out of the water you know two and a half feet and then you're standing on the deck and you're six feet tall so now you're eight feet in the air and you're fishing clear water and you're trying to work a swim bait like a glide bait you can see it out there mm-hmm. well those fish they those carp they see you a long <laughs> way off man and they're gone yeah but in my little boat you know i can stand up there and they literally you know i've had them come right under Sneak the up right on out them, the huh? other side i they they don't seem to be afraid of that boat yeah you know um let's uh we're gonna do a commercial break guys what, you got this? phoenix rods no i'm gonna promote my sponsors can i do that uh first one's phoenix rods please check them out you can see on the bottom i guess you guys would see the bottom right uh they're a huge supporter of the podcast uh, Shane, you got a recommendation for a rod? Yes. <clears throat> for throwing giant size topwater plugs, the Black Diamond PSW 909 XH, uh, size 400 reel with 30 pound mono. Perfect. Do you have a 400 you like? I throw the, the bees and I also uh, have the tranks. Really? Mm-hmm. Tranks. They're going for, fast with that though, right? The yeah. HD for the fin baits. Okay. And for the other stuff, I got the slower reels, but Perf. So for you top check, water HG. Check that out, and we'll have more videos coming from Shane. He's helped with the Patreon, another big supporter of the podcast. Uh, check out his podcast. I forgot what episode it was. Do you remember, Shane? 
You fucking remember. Don't act like you don't fucking remember. Oh, 230 something. <laughs> uh, Shane did a great episode, and uh, he's a Phoenix Pro Staff as well, so check him out on Instagram. He has a cool inter- It's Smorg. Did you start a new one? or is it, is Smorg135. It okay. His cool fishing page. Also, you can check him out at your local tackle shop. Uh, next to me is Save On. I got Performance. I got um, Alley Fishing Alliance. Uh, what's next to you, Shane? Tackle shop. Tackle Express. Okay. Uh, same thing, Tackle Express, Butch? Yep, Tackle Express. What about you, Phil? Last Chance. Uh, any other ones? Uh, the, you got Fisherman's Access right here. Uh, any, any other ones? No? All right. Um, yeah, check them out at all those tackle shops, guys. Uh, please check. Buy a rod. Tag me in the photo. I'll share it for sure. And I'll put a funny comment on it. hey oh. <laughs> 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 Next one. If you look at that code on the bottom, it says go to electric eyewear. You get 30% off right there. CC30. Now, I use the stackers because I got a big, fat fucking head. But Butch likes what? What do you like, Butch? Uh, well, this is the one that, that Swimbait Underground was selling. And to be honest with you, when I find something I like, I don't read the names of what they are. <laughs> I just buy what I like. I think it's the JJF. But 12 you know, I, I think i put them on and they were the most comfortable glasses that i've ever worn and they have an amber lens and i can see everything out there and they're the best i mean i've had a lot of hobies and other glasses i'm not saying they're they're bad or anything like that but these are the best glasses i've ever had uh in my boat in fact i scratched scratched them because i dropped them and stepped on them and got another pair right away but uh they, you could see everything out there. Are, is that your lens choice when you're picking a sunglass? Mm-hmm. Oh, for everything. Why, why is that? I don't know. I, things just stand out. They get brighter. I can see my baits out there. If you have weeds, you know, I can see see follow the edge of the weed line, okay. the shadows and everything. And those are amber, you said? They're amber. Okay. Yeah. No, a great recommendation as Best well. Best one I've ever had, man. I mean, I've had some people uh, ask for recommendations on lens type, and that that's one of them. Um, yeah, so check out Electric. Use code cc30 for 30 percent off another big support of the podcast thank you electric for supporting this podcast now we'll jump into your guys's fucking questions um shane's got a got a little tagger board right there ready for <laughs> uh Double say, digit. The, say, say the say the name of the person and start off you guys could both read back we'll, and forth. we'll start off with the the one that came up earlier uh or pilot what is your take on live scope on the live scope um you know i haven't played with it that much but i see a lot of guys on the lake that are like spinning around in circles <laughs> you know they go to they come down a point and then you see them do a circle and then they go down and they do a circle and i got them at my lake doing it and it to me it looks like it takes a lot of your time away from actual fishing and I've got my numbers of fish without that live scope and it mainly instinct and stuff. And that's pretty much what I'm going to stick with. You know, I do know that like Josh Jones, those bass go out and they suspend and, and, and I've been able to document that my own special way Mm -hmm. to find out what they do, um, at certain times of the year, but I didn't need a live scope to do it. Um, uh, you know, I, I I see maybe in a tournament if if you're that guy that wants to go off of a point and then throw a sinko on something out there because you can see it sinking and it's all about trying to get more money. I get it, but for what I'm doing, uh, I'm going to go with what I know. Uh, here's a, here's a, another couple of questions on top of that is a um, do you think that the live scope's going to affect the fish catch kind of like Gilbert talked about and b Second part of the question, do you think people will learn uh, not not feel the, feel the fishing as much? You know what I'm saying? Because you're looking at the live scope, you don't feel feel as much. You know what I'm trying to say? It's like having an aqua view. You spend your whole day looking at an aqua view instead of fishing. And I see where it has a, where it's been damaging to a fishery like where I fish and it's the only and it's in the crappie field. Because these guys, they get out in the middle of the lake where the crappie are usually at in the uh, wintertime, and they're feeding on the shad schools. And usually they're in 
50 feet of water but they're usually hanging in around 20 and they just go around and they hit it and they can keep finding where that school's moving and they can stay on them and then they're catching whatever their limit is 15 a piece or whatever and they're, we have big crappie and the next thing i know they're going hey butch do you want some crappie and it's like you know I, no, I don't want any of your crappie. <laughs> Why don't you quit catching them or letting them go? You don't have to kill everything that you catch. You're like, I don't want and, any of your dirty live scope crappie. Well, <laughs> it, it, what's happened is 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 it depletes the, the fishery. It's a fragile fishery when it comes to that stuff, you know. And they're laying eggs. They're usually full of roe at that time. And, yeah. And, but they're, they got tunnel vision, and that's what they're going to do. And then, then the word spreads, and, and then they're all doing it. Um, Did you see I, that guy at Isabel catch that? What is it, sixteen? Like Isabel was on. Oh yeah, Out. that yeah, was a big. Okay. And he was crappie oh, yeah. fishing, right? Yeah. yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, and he's in trees and stuff, so he got Dude. his ass kicked. Yeah, <laughs> got his ass kicked. That was a good. That was a pretty fish, man. But the it's, the live scope. I've heard some things through some other trophy bass fishermen that they tell me that like when they shoot the live scope under the docks and stuff like that, you can scope the fish but as soon as you hit them with it you see them move off really you know so that's what it is and then again you got to stop and think well what do you what do you what are you shooting what are you looking at are you looking at american shad you looking at bass you looking at carp what are you looking at down there you know i mean it doesn't tell you what type of fish it is so you could be sitting there you know casting on carp if 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 that's what it is so yeah. you know i i it probably has it, i know it has benefits especially in the tournament field but for what i do it's you know it, i'm a big bass trophy fisherman that's the way it's going to be until the day i die and and i'm just going to stick with what i know because i it, it, i'm still successful at catching them i don't have any you problem don't need catching it you don't them. you don't feel like you need it i just can't we just don't have fish that are twice as big as 10 pounds swimming anymore and we used to you know shane has even seen them swimming in there like that yeah you know so uh yeah so you, I'll did say, you write I, the people's names down when they did yeah okay perfect yeah i'll i'll, I'll stick <laughs> stick to that you know uh if i get if you know what if i buy a new ranger which i'm looking at one what, uh, what kind of range are you looking at uh z21 really yeah oh wow but i think i'm going to get a new one uh and because you know you you start looking on on there they you can get one that's that's a 16 18 even even back to a 2008 or 2005 and they're asking 40 50 60 grand a boat that's six years old they want ten thousand dollars less than what a new one's gonna cost Isn't that crazy me. yeah and i don't need power poles you know i don't need half the junk they got yeah. on there it's not what i you know i don't need that stuff so uh i i might just go ahead and get a new one because i would never have to buy another boat the rest of my life right that's for sure yeah um, no i'm looking at boats too because I, I i it's hard having three boys and fitting them on my little 16 and a half it's yeah. like it's not gonna work yeah. but i would keep it because it's easy it's a like having the small always boat. keep your boat the so small I, boat the small boat's so easy because i could just dump it in the water and go yeah you know yeah so um we go next question shane phil shane whoever's doing it all right uh john Sano. Uh, I apologize about the John Sano, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is it true that fish get turned off from n nose up or nose down baits on the on the retrieve? Turned off? It, like what do you mean? Like like if the bait's I, if the down. if the baits nose down or nose up, if it's not running true. Mm, well, I think that uh, a a big bass, a really big one, they got really big eyes, and I see them looking at the baits when they come in sometimes. All my baits run level, you know. Uh, you know, the the bluegill I have, it, I call it the escape gill. And it's pretty cool how it works because when you snap the thing, it sh it's, a, it's, a, it's a swim bait, rubber bait, but it actually darts side to side mm -hmm. like it's trying to get away. And it that's, was hard to figure that out with a rubber bait. But uh, I, all my stuff I try to run run pretty level you know and baits are designed like a huddleston designed with the hook you know the tie up here but that keeps that bait 
you know, at a, at a level level pace. But you know, then you got to stop and think. Well, I get bit on the fall a lot too. Not a lot, but I do get bit on the yeah, fall. Yeah, yeah. That means that that thing's going down like this. So I think you just need to just be ready. <laughs> you know, uh, who's, hey, great no answer. one can tell yeah. you be ready. Yeah. No one can tell you. How much of this is like rule. time on the water, though? Like, how much is it like if you're going to answer a question, be like, well, put time on the water, figure it out? Because you can't tell a guy that fishes at Silverwood what to do because Silverwood's a different fucking lake than Castaic, right? Absolutely. I mean, so it's hard for you to give your big bass fishing experience to a guy that's fishing a lake that has a different structure, different fish, different bait, right? In a way, uh, bass are a creature of habit. You know, you have to look for it. But you can take a lake and 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 look at it like this: Does it have striper, or does it not have striper? You know, and then you can figure out well where you have to fish because striper are gonna rule. Yeah. And you're not gonna find a bunch of small fish on a high spot offshore because the striper are gonna take care of them you know they're going to be you know someplace where they can hide if those big stripers roll around but like you know some of our lakes you know i i fish the cliffs a lot and stuff like that i mean you look at diamond valley you know most of the fish i see caught there on swim baits are pretty much pretty tight you know right and you mm. don't see too many over 10 because they just rule same with upper castaic you know uh same with pyramid you know, you just don't yeah. don't see that many. I did get a ten one. I get one ten a year at the upper lake. Okay. You know, and it's but it's usually in the spring, and it's I like to fish during the weekdays. You got a time down. And yeah. during like like rain or you know cloudy weather kind of thing. You know, then I I know I have good chances yeah. of catching yeah. fish. What's a shitty question you have? I see you guys laughing at something. <laughs> it was a comment. I, yeah, you What's want, the comment? Please tell me the comment. I use amber lenses when mushroom hunting in the woods. It's crazy. <laughs> why not? <laughs> why? Why? Not? Have I you ever took mushrooms out before, there. Butch? No, I <laughs> ate them when I was mushroom a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't. Uh, I never went looking for them. They told me they grow on cow patties. <laughs> Here's a good one right here. A fresh question uh, from XXXXX. What made Butch want to tune a 250 and not just find a different bait? Because the bait is unique in itself. It, uh, it has, you know, in the water it looks so natural uh, when it's swimming, but it has, it doesn't make noise. It's not a, a PVC plastic injected type of bait. It has a rubber skin over it, which gives it a little dimension in the water. Um, and when the hooks hit the side of the bait, it, it, it makes no noise. It doesn't clack and make, make all those noise. So... And it was also the most graceful bait that I've ever had that, uh, you know, and I, I'll be honest with you, there was no glide baits until this, this sort of bait came out. Uh, this was like pretty much one of the first ones, and it, it's, it, they hit it right on the head. And that's why I had it for two years and didn't open my mouth and <laughs> did the damage. And now I, you know, I do the depths thing. But it uh, it still gets bit to this day, and uh, you know I I just don't see those I the other baits get bit I see it on the internet, but I see big fish caught on this bait, and I see big stripers caught on it too. This one kind of correlates with the butch. Uh, everyone freaks out about the OG depths two fifty compared to the new ones. Even though you tune your baits, do you still prefer the OG or the new one, or any difference? No, I don't. I have a lot, a lot of OGs, but I fish all the ones I tune. In fact, I just snapped four of them up last week. Oh, geez, just to have them because the price was right. Nice. This is from Alan Angels. While you were fishing in the early years, was your reputation ever the motivation for catching big bass? Yeah, in a in a way, I I. But it's what I wanted to do in my heart, you know. Uh, I wanted to catch big bass and, you know, uh, maybe a guy can be, have notoriety or something for fishing tournaments, but I always thought that, uh, you know, catching big bass would be, be pretty cool to, uh, to have a little bit of a legacy on and, 
and then to to see how it all played out and you know to to you know i am a swim baiter but i'm a trophy bass fisherman i've caught them on everything you know and i'll be honest with you there were days when there was so many crawdad fishermen on the lake that had a hundred yards of line uh, doubled anchored on my lake that you could not fish a swim bait and if you can't beat them you join them and this is one thing this was going to be the first um we were going to try to do one with Danny Cadota. He's yeah. been on before. He just responded like last week. So we'll do one. And I, I want to talk about history with you and Danny because you guys are both catching big fish. I, I, would, I would save it for them because yes. that's what made me know where these fish come and where they go. And when you're swim baiting, you're guessing. But when you're doing that, you're learning which way they're coming in which way they're going out and if they're going to suspend out in like 15 feet of water in the middle of the lake no i agree i agree and that'll be a good one coming up guys um you guys can keep going with the questions given all that you have accomplished what are your current goals now for bass fishing that's from daniel i want to catch a modern day 10 pounder out of lake casitas and then i'm going to retire and i might move to clear lake i don't know where i'm going to go uh i'm always going to fish big bass so no matter what i do i'm going to go catch bass would you ever you consider know. changing the whole technique up like say say you wanted to catch your 10 pounder you caught it what if you started doing the bfs stuff for a big bass what's that <laughs> it's all the light like the really light line um no no <laughs> no no spinning rods no 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 yeah. it's, it, they make mini like little little fucking no, big ass. No, tears. you're looking you're looking at a swim baiter <laughs> that can go on a polygraph right now and say that I have never tied on, bought, or thrown a cinco. You're looking at a swim baiter right now that can go on a polygraph and say that I have never drop shotted in my life. I've swim. You're making baited. me feel That's dirty. You're making me feel really dirty <laughs> right well, now. Boys. It, catch, I, it catches fish. I watch those guys kick the crap out of them. I, but you know. I'm going to catch bigger fish at the end. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. You know? Double digit. Uh, yeah. It's just a, fa it's a fact. A double digit, that, guys. You guys should be fucking a, drinking. A, double digit. A, every dog, dog has double its digit. day. You know, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Bigger's in the middle. You know. Hey, what, we can barely see him. Cheers. Well, you look at all the tournaments that they have. Almost every week at all the lakes, and they're all drop shot in most of them, or Cinco, or maybe crankbait. I like a crankbait. Um, but but you learning, just don't see that many double-digit fish caught in these tournaments. But learning, you, I mean, do you, do you, a lot of these kids, a lot, a lot of newer fishermen, swim bait fishermen, go straight to the swim bait. Do you still recommend them trying to learn how to, like, fish a jerk bait? And, uh, yeah. You, you got like, You got to know it all. Yeah, you you gotta you gotta learn it all. You whether you're gonna throw a hula popper, a jitterbug, and a Rapala, and a Cordell spot, and a and then a eight inch black man's plastic worm. You know you gotta learn how to get bit on all that stuff to make you a better fisherman at swim baiting because then you learn how these fish act. If you could go and watch these people get a scoop of shad and watch them annihilate the fish and you could see how those fish react to live stuff and you can roll stuff right through there and not they won't eat it you know? <laughs> have you done that before yeah i mean it's I've, I've talked to my friend bobby you guys know bobby big dick all the time uh and he said you you can catch a pyramid shad right or you could use a little shad traps or what is it what can you do you can catch threadfin in any of these lakes and fish here. them right yeah. yeah yeah so i heard it's really fun like to do uh, something it's different stupid. to do yeah. <laughs> it's stupid I, take the kids like that'd be something cool to take the kids and you know i on a fresh shore fishing line, maker. Yeah. yeah i could yeah i could fish side but he could have shad and i could be fishing lures he will catch a hundred fish and i might get one mm -hmm. you know but they re they know what real is that's why you have to make whatever you make you need to make it look as real as possible if you want to start fooling this these bigger fish for sure because they know, yeah. you know, they, 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 they know the color, they know everything. And, and it's, you know, when you have things that are painted sort of like Disneyland and stuff, I just don't <laughs> think it works out. That, that kind of goes into this question from CG. 
How important is the action of the bait versus the action that you give the 250? The action that I give the 250? Versus the way it comes out the box. Versus fishing at stock. Um, I work it a little bit differently. You know, I mean, you have to take everything in as a scenario because there's days when you have fish that are tracking the bait and they're like five feet behind it and five feet down. And there's going to be a time of that day when they're going to bite. You just have to stick with it. But you have days when they're just hot on the back of it. And then when you see them, you need to pause, snap it, get it to spin around and look at them. Or let them think that that, that bait detects them and it's going to try to escape from them. And then they usually light up on it. Uh, if you get a wolf pack on you and one hits it, they're all going to come up and hit it. Uh, because they just go nuts. And you probably won't hook any one of them. Because they just they just go ballistic on it, and then you know like 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 I said when the bait is when you have those fish that are tracking you, and you they come to the boat and then they just swim away, um, or you have your sonar on the water's a little murky and you can see every time you bring it in or every fifth cast there's a mark that goes under your sonar about five feet down. Those are fish that are following your bait in, you know what I mean. So you need to get that thing out there and start doing stuff out there action to get them to go instead of that straight retrieve so you know it's just it's just just gotta fish yeah they like the way the refrigerator door sounds <laughs> they can hear it yeah do it again oh <laughs> it sound like a whap <laughs> <laughs> i'll take you one. Wanna, oh, he wants another one they want to know why you're giving him Modellos when you have cores in the fridge. Hey, Modellos are only for down-ass fools. That's why. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Actually, we have cores now. I, we're going to have the Viking come refill us in a minute because we're going to be out of beers in a second. I got to drive home. That's why you don't have a castle here. <laughs> <laughs> that Here's shit one from, my uh, ass. <laughs> <laughs> Nate Rosen wants to know, do you think the pressure from tournament anglers affects the big fish for days? Nah. I could fish right behind those guys and catch completely different fish than they're after. I go, you know, that's the cool part about my lake is most of the float tubers, most of the kayakers, they're all drop shotters. So the way I look at it is I've got the whole lake to fish because I'm presenting something completely different to them and I'm sticking with it, you know, the whole duration of the day. So they don't bother me a bit. They're just, to me, they're a pain in the ass when they're on the spot. <laughs> that's what it is. Uh, Jay Priest, what's the most difficult fish or bite that you have ever chased, and how long did that dry spell last, and what did you do to change that? As far as bass fishing? Correct. Well, actually, it just says fish. Just a fish? A fish. Like bat, but it'd have to be bass. See, that's, that's what's that. the crazy thing is people don't know that you do all kinds of fishing. Well, I do tuna and That's what I'm all saying. Like, kind of stuff. Yeah, you go you white sea bass, tuna, everything. Yeah, yeah. Um... I think they mean in general because it just bass. says fisher bite. Yeah, it would have to be the bass. Well, you're the goat but, for the bass. You talk about the bass. Uh, back in the Huddleston days, you know, after I had fished that bait for about four years or so, I would fish it all year long, 24-7. One time I fished 300 days a year. One time I fished 200. I usually average in the, in the, somewhere in 100. And there was a spot on the beach, and I threw that hud. And I knew there was fish there, and I couldn't get them to bite. And I, they were there like clockwork every summer mm -hmm. off that beach. Mm -hmm. And they would push the, the trout up, and you could see, you, once in a while you'd see a trout half-stroking because, because they'd hit them out there. And then, and then they that told me, and the heron would be also on the bank, and that would clue me in that these, these bass in July and August are chasing these fish in the right at daybreak out of deep water and pushing them up on this shallow and they're hitting them and i fished that hud 200 and something hours i think three months without a bite without a freaking bite then i finally got a bite and it's like whoa guys. next year i did the same thing then i switched over to the i i got introduced to a tournament talon little bait six inch bait and I threw that in that spot because it had the paddle tail and I was getting bit I got 
I lost five double digits back to back. God. And they were all on that single hook on the back that they rig them with. And that was the day that I stopped because they were hooked inside in that fat part. But when they'd come up and jump the bait, a jump, and they'd just throw the bait out right next to me. And it was, it, it pissed me off, <laughs> you know? So that was the day that, that I learned how to put a top hook on and uh, rig it with the crimp and stuff. And then I incorporated that into a HUD. Then after that, uh, it was the original Optimum. And then I had made some modifications to it. And so now I had a bait that got me bit in the summertime. I didn't get bit on the HUD tail. I got bit on that from fall through the winter, early spring. And then when I had the paddle tail type bait on there, that carried me through but i never had the goose that laid the golden egg for those super hot days in the midsummer days until i got the 250 and then it was like i had a year-round arsenal that that did the damage of double digits all the time <laughs> look at the goat right there double digits he takes a fucking drink i'm empty i would have done it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it uh, it it was incredible, and I knew that when I had this bait, that I could take it to any lake. I could go to NorCal. I could go anywhere, and I could just stroke them. And I gave the bait to a kid that worked for me, Robbie, Robert. I think he what nine tournaments in a row at Piru, and he had this bait. He went to Diamond Valley, I think the opener, wasn't it? And he won that one in like the first four casts. Who is this? And they and Rob. the the big Rob. Yeah, and the funny oh. the funny part about See, it is we don't even know who the fuck it is. Robbie's like he's talking about a little kid. And shit. <laughs> I'm like, Rob, the, what do you mean? The guy we're scared of? Yeah, that guy. The funny, okay. The, <laughs> the Matt from Optimum is in is in Temecula. Yeah. So he, when he knew I was getting fish on the baits and stuff because we were going back and forth, he decided to put a couple baits in his local tackle shop. Last chance. Yeah. And those baits sat in there for about two or three months. I think Kevin Manson was the last one to buy one. And had they taken those baits to Diamond Valley when they got them in, they'd have. They'd that, have you know that they'd have what, that big what an trophy asshole on their is, wall. Huh? Yeah, they. <laughs> uh, but then, then, it, then the guys started getting it up up in Northern Cal, yeah. and then I had guys telling me, "Oh, well, you know, they've had it for like." what maybe two months and they're saying oh the fish in my lake are conditioned now and this and that and it's like i don't even believe that word when it comes to trophy bass fishing as yeah. far as condition it's 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 just changing changing it up and doing some different things because they're going to come back to it you know whether that the day they're not going to eat that you know it, it is what it is you know they will come you will have another day when they eat that they might want to i agree them, i agree 100 percent. you know and you that's the, the biggest thing is you've you don't psych it. yourself out. You proved it. You proved you know, it. Always be positive, and and like I said, I I just go for broke. I'm I'm my when I shut my eyes at night, I see big bass. There you go. I don't see little bass. When I see eight pounders at the launch ramp, that's a guy that I has launch, big dick energy, guys. Yeah, I leave, and the next thing I know, the next two boats that launch, they're all sitting by the launch ramp, throwing their little white gitsits and stuff at them, <laughs> and I'm like, that. Well, I got the whole lake to myself now. Uh, yeah. What are you guys laughing at over there? Okay. We want to hear it. You can't say that one. These are undercover fake accounts. Yeah. What are they saying? You got to fucking tell me. Gay shit. Gay shit. Really? <laughs> About me? Are they oh, saying no. like suck penises or something? No. No. no real, not the actual just, gay shit. No, yeah, just the no. stuff, your normal stuff. Oh, yeah. okay. No, Michael Murphy wants to know if you throw a, a bigger bait, the deeper the fish are set up. A bigger bait than a 250? It doesn't say 250. Just if, if the fish are deeper and shallower, are you going to throw a bigger bait at them than you would a shallow fish? No, I'd say I stick with the same thing. Yeah. Pretty much big all the time. Here's one. Doesn't matter. VSM31, what's your most memorable catch, not a DD or swim bait fishing? Or either or? At swim bait fishing? Not no, swim bait not fishing. not swim bait fishing. And not Ooh, necessarily a DD. The, my, I have more memorable not catches than i have catches how about we go that route 
because those are the ones that really bother you. You know, the, the most memorable day I ever had out there was the day that I got the... The Chevy Cheeks? Or, no, the original Optimum, 10-inch, and it was... Uh, I forgot what the trout color was. Uh, it was a darker trout color. I'd never thrown it before. It was a 10-inch bait, had a single hook on the back. And I lost, in a matter of about 15 minutes, probably five bass, and I don't think one of them was under 12 pounds. And the biggest one was probably 14 out in the whole area there. And that's when it clicked, you know, because AC plugs were going, and they, that was like a, a whole new phenomenon. And then the chubby cheek, but this was a, this was a rubber bait, and they... They annihilated it. And Were you using the Ronowski? Nah, that's a piece of junk. <laughs> <laughs> what, what about the stalker? They trout? said they did. <laughs> they don't look like real. Uh, the Ronowski was only like yeah, that big. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, they, you know. No, that's a, pl <laughs> that's a ploy. You, you didn't fish the stalker trout, did you? The, Not the really. Yeah. No, I just didn't like the wing in the back. I, I know it probably worked and stuff, but, you know, I... I did make my own. I don't know if you ever saw it over at my house, uh, but I made it with a, a 10 inch one with out of a body like this. And then I used a normal black hook on the back instead of that saltwater hook that they had. I tried to refine it a little bit, you know, to, and the pour, yeah. getting the pour correct, you know, cause you know, back, you know, they, it, it was a phenomenal lure in its day, but it, you know, it still was a little crude. Yeah, I got a stripers on it, but yeah, no big. Bad. But no, I never gave it much mind. But the tig pins, they kick kick the shit out of them all. Yeah, they did. And I think in muddy water, that bait probably sh shined more than any other. You know, no doubt, it had a lot of vibration. Yeah, yeah. Oh. South Jersey, South Jersey fisherman, O twenty eight. When do you feel using a soft bait over a hard bait? Like a glide is better. Does water clarity come into play? Water clarity comes into play. I like a little bit clearer water for the glide so they could see it farther. Um, and I prefer the glide more in the spring to the end of fall. And then from there, I like the, uh, the rubber baits all the way through the winter and okay. into. But I do have a bait that gets bit all year. That's a rubber bait. That's that bluegill. That's your custom bait, right? They want me to put it out there someday, and maybe they, we can get it figured out. What do you mean, like with optimum, like with a? Uh, yeah, you know, just you know, because see, when I make stuff at home, I make stuff that'll that gets me through the day. You know, I'm not making something that's gonna last you for, you know, for a whole season, and you think you just can throw this. And no maintenance or anything with it, you know. It's rubber. They tear up, you know. Uh, the but crimping, so your you day, need to recrimp. But your day is different than anyone else's day because your day, you might hit, get hit by, like, four 10-pounders. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But not everyone else is going to get hit like that. So part of me goes, well, put it out. Because no one – if – I always say this. If you said, Nick, here's, here's a $180 bait, but guess what? You will get a fucking 10-pounder. You might lose it, but you'll get a 10 pounder. I'd be like, no problem. No, I don't get it. I don't fucking get it. Like even a $300 bait. Okay. And I've had this debate. If it's going to catch me a fish that I probably spend $300 in beer. No problem. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like I get fucked up off of 300. So why is it not okay for me to pay a certain amount for a bait? If you don't want it, then don't get it. But if it's going to make me confident to get that bite, I don't give a fuck, dude. Yeah. Really. But I see guys with two fifties go out there and they throw it for twenty minutes and then they put it down. Yeah. They don't throw it. I, I've been through nine hoods in a day. Dude, you know, and, back and that's in the, the day I'd the go point. I used to have a stack of them. I'd go through minimum of four. We heard in the a day. story. Well, we heard from the our story. talks in the past though too, you're not afraid to go back home and Frankenstein that shit back together or toss it. <laughs> he like, didn't whatever need you're to. feeling he like. Yeah, too many. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm saying, like, on your bluegill shit, you'll go back and melt a new tail on it. Like, and the best... Oh, I, I just awesome. go yeah. throw them in a pile, and, and I've got a little stash set up. But I, you know, I can... I have every mold of every swim bait 
that rubber swim bait that was made from the beginning from bass tricks to the original optimums that you would never you don't even know what they look like to the uh ospreys to to present day even the stalker trout i have molds an archive of all that in my room and if something's happening whether it's a six inch eight inch seven inch i can even make a bait like this if i see that the trout are like really chunky I, trout which people might get all, you, all you do is this when you shit, pour bro. the mold you just open the mold and pin it with a little shaped pin and then you make that bait even fatter i go in at night and i pour six of them before 10 o'clock <laughs> and glue the eyes on rig them up and the next morning i'm back out on the water with them and i lose my six there and but i got fish in the live well and then i go back if i'm going fishing the next day i make <laughs> i make them again the next day but i can i but can you want to buy them right but you want to go buy them from the company to support them right well, obviously. well yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. but when you go through as many baits as me and back in the day you would be, would, you'd uh, be back in the day so that's a dip yeah i, I, I never it. i've never sold a bait that i've made no no and yeah. hey ever oh this is an argument yeah. i had yeah I would never, I would never uh, copy a bait and make it. I have friends that are bait makers. I'll never copy their bait. Mm -hmm. But if I, there's something like, I've molded sluggos, big nine inch ones. What about lead heads? We can't talk about that yet, guys. <laughs> <laughs> we got something that works. But um, yeah. uh, you know, like I don't think it's a big deal if you're using your own shit and you're not, you're not giving it to anyone because yeah, I can't afford to pay. If I find a bait that's a soft bait for you know a certain amount of money, I get it's their their living. But you're a different story because well, you know how to fucking but I do don't, it. I don't put it out public either. It's like you, you don't just see said. those videos. But you just put it out public, Butch. No, no he, he just got done you saying. He makes see, it for him to get through no, the day. No, and that you, you only see the, the, the real deal stuff or like something that I personally made. I, of course. But I don't put out something because I can't tell you how. Guys that make baits are usually not sticks. Let's put it that way. <laughs> if they were sticks, <laughs> then they'd be known for catching oh, big fish. Fuck. Okay, they're bait makers, they're designers, they're creators, they're painters. Okay, hey, you guys got to take a sticks. fucking Mike shot for drop. this one. Mike, drop for this one. This guy's going hard as Double digit. Well, they're not. They're just not. Think about it. Honestly, so I, a lot of them are, don't even have the time to. Fish well, so when you get them. a bait, you look at it and you go, "Man, anatomically, that guy hit it on the head." But man, his paint job looks like shit. <laughs> or that pour looks like it's a streamline. There's 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 nothing to it. You know, it's just straight line pour. God, if you could just make it like this, it would be phenomenal. Or this bait swims phenomenal. But but this is screwed up. You should have done this over here with it you should you know and that's what i do i go home i i i, I know that that's going to be something that i need and i tweak now it here's a question do you right. ever go back to the bait maker and go hey if it's a buddy or uh, anyone and they they come to you and they go butch i made this awesome bait i really I, people like it i want you to check it out butch and you say well i don't like this this and this try to fix that do you try to do that no no i have had them send me baits and they tell me this is going to be the next thing. And then I open the box up and I look at it. And then I close the box back up. And I send it back to them. And they go, oh, I guess I understand what you're trying to say. I'm just, I don't want to say it, but no. It, you know, go ahead. Try to But you try know what? I, I, I don't <laughs> no. think that's a bad thing. Like if. I'm not. In, <laughs> that's not what I want to do. I know what works. I know what I need. I need. My Abrazex fluorocarbon. I need my certain kind of rods. Did you get a sponsor yet on your fluorocarbon? Uh, I did, but I sort of got hosed. I heard about the Mike, the, the Mike Bond, and the whole Western. Yeah, outfit. I got they hosed me good. But you never got it again. <laughs> no, I'm sure I could get it. Look at Shane knows the whole fucking story. I'm, Shane was probably I'm, there. I still happened. have all the emails <laughs> going back and forth, you know. Uh, but uh, you know, I I I know a few guys in that business, but. I, you know what? I can afford to buy line. I don't give a shit. You know, I <laughs> I, you I, I never chased. But anything. guess what? Guess what? Yeah. You you uh nothing but people, double digits. Yeah, double digits. Hey, the only thing he chases. I just <laughs> snapped up uh, two thousand yard spools of twenty that I found on the internet, and I just got them last week because it's a, it's non existent right now. You know, twenty. Yeah. Tw 
25. Uh, I, Rob should I, get I, his. I just stocked up. Did you check it out? About two months ago. Why I, so? I I'm stocked up. Well, because of the shipping and stuff. Oh, no uh, one can get it right now. You can't get this these, summer, Gama, these Gamagatsu hooks Ooh, you can't get right summer. now. I just snapped up the last of them from some little fly-by-night tackle shop in Florida that had three boxes or four or five boxes of the, the these. Yeah. And and these I was able to get some, you know, some 25 packs, but I bought them off of eBay cuz I knew that eventually I'm going to I'm going to need them. And yeah. if they if next year comes along and they're talking like we're not getting shipments, you know, and supplies, well then we're not we're going to be having to it's use rude. penguin line. <laughs> You know what I mean? The word on the it, street is hooks and hooks and a Ranowski and a Ranowski trout. Hooks and line. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They're going to be shortage this summer. Welcome to Cast and Crank Line and Hook Company. Okay. Right. <laughs> yeah. Well, you got You got to be. That's what I always did. I was always on top of the game. Like when it came to the spinner baits, you know, I drove when I found that spinner bait that that just wrecked them, mm -hmm. and I, I I drove from here to Palm Springs one day, and I hit every tackle shop on that way. Then I cut across through san diego and then i went all the way back through long beach and i hit every tackle shop and out of all of that i got six of them then the next day i drove from here to santa barbara because there was a tackle shop there and a couple in ventura i didn't get any of them then i talked to the guy at one of my local tackle shops that was a representative for that company i can get any color that you want okay well this is the one that's working right here that color was a blam i can't get that color oh, shit. And that was when they used to tie the skirt with a rubber band. So then I said, you know what? Okay. So I made the mold. And I make my own. There you go. But that's what happens. And if you look at the history of, of swim baits, there's not many swim baits that are on the market today that were on the market back in the day. You know, they all... You know, they all try to go to something maybe the latest and greatest or a different design. But those, those this, this yeah. right here is tw a 20 year old bait they're on shane's collection room <laughs> yeah so you know and so, I, I i don't like single hooks on the top so here's a cool one from uh gary brandenburg many of us look to butch for accurate legitimate information and knowledge is there one person butch has always respected the most for fishing knowledge and who would it be like when you were cutting your teeth only my close friends because i know they'll tell me the truth you don't, you, you know, we have these guys we call, let's just say the guy's name's Mike. We call him Five Pounder Mike, okay? Mom. Why? Because every time you talk to the guy, he's got five pounders. I caught five, no photos, you never see him catch a fish, but I got five, I got five, five pounders. I got five, five. But my close friends will say, I never got bit today. I never got anything, you know, just like me today. I went out, I busted my ass this morning, tried to catch a fish so I could do a little thing for for instagram before we came here i never got touched not touched man and man my heart was in it i thought for sure i was gonna snook or something up but i never even got a follower it was god awful let's put it that way <laughs> here's one for me now i know the 250 is probably like the all-time bait can you name three other bait makers that you like you might use them once in a while. Maybe you don't use them much, but you like what they do. Well, I I have to, I would have to rate that as far as the staples of creation. Okay, let's let's name uh, you know, three plastic baits. I kind of like. Well, when it comes to plastic, it would be Sean Donovan. It would be Steve Harner, mm -hmm. and uh, and well, it would have to be Matt because he owns owns Optimum. Yeah, and that's and that they pour rubber. Those are the three Those that you really like. like. Those would be them right now. Okay. And then when it comes to the the hard baits, uh, you know, I'm not a big changer in something that's working. So, you know, I have a stockpile of chubby cheeks, and Kenny Huddleston was the creator of that. And uh, you know, like I said back in the day. I was smart enough to make copies of all the fins. So I have molds for all those fins on those rubber baits. So I have an endless supply of repair, you know, which that's why I pick up half the baits I pick up because they can't buy the fins and yeah. the bait looks like trash. But Kenny Huddleston is probably the number one innovator as far as swim baiting is concerned because they came out with the foam head rubber body 
and then he came out with his own thoughts on the Huddleston Deluxe, which definitely was a game changer. What about Bobby? I've heard a couple of times Bobby D. King or Bobby King. Well, he's the spinnerbait guy, right? I'm not sure, but it was. I think, this was a. So Dream Smasher kind of has a bait that oh, has. Okay. You know what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, they sent me some of those. Yeah. Yeah, I know. Uh, oh, what's his name? He's in Minnesota. Yeah, great guy, N yeah. real nice guy. But uh, he I'm used only to be a moderator for yes. a couple of them. Yes. Yeah, he's he's always been a good man to me. You know, he's the one that let me know the bait makers that were on my shit when it was Swim Bait Nation, <laughs> and told me that they had different, they had the same IP number, and they're they're both <laughs> talking they're talking shit to me Fake. but it's the same guy answering the other guy's questions oh fuck yeah and he's a bait he's a popular bait maker in san diego right now he's has been for a long time he's the one that sent me the baits that i sent back oh man but uh so the, the, uh, what about i mean you so you have those those three there's all time what about new do you have any new bait makers that you really like um you There's got to be I, someone. I, I, I got to be honest with you. I don't. I don't pay attention to anybody else, uh, because I see everybody just knocking off each other. They're all feeding off of each other on these baits, and a lot of them are small baits and stuff. The. The baits that I have right now that I make in my little shop are completely different than anything out there. There's a game changer out there. You just have to find what it is because it's gone along in, at the, from the beginning, from the AC plug, you know, to the chubby cheek, to the optimum, to the Osprey, to the Huddleston, yeah. the Punker. Those are all game changers. They all had a different... Hey, another, another drink you got to take yeah. is to Jeremy Anderson. He's oh, he'll worst, love that. Worst person that I know. Like punker, digit. punker. Every time you mention a punker or Jeremy, Butch, did you asshole. Ever, those were all game-changing baits. Those are magic baits that spawned what's happening now. It's just that now a lot of baits are crankbait size baits, but they still call them swim baits. And to me, they're plugs. What do you? you what know? size do you consider a swim bait? This is a true swim bait right here. So that size. Yeah. This so is that's a, what. This like is a, a glide nine? bait right here. Okay. Okay. Those two. That's that's what it is. Uh, so you're bait, looking for a big swim. A big that's bait a swim is, bait. A, okay. is, a, is anything probably uh, a solid eight inch, not you know two little fluffy tail feathers coming out the back <laughs> that are another two inches long that make it eight inches, but a you know a true a true length. Yeah. You, know? you remember the GS trout? Yeah. Did you ever catch double digits on that? No, I never got one on that, and I had them, and I still have a couple to this day. And it was more like a straight. Yeah, it was yeah, straight. It was really hard. Some what was Wolfgang? Was that the guy's name? I don't remember who was making them. They came in a tube. Came in the tube, and uh, and the guys caught fish on them. But it was like a big. Uh, Had a double hook. In what them. would you call that? Uh, it's like a giant sluggo. Sluggo, yeah, yeah, big giant sluggo. Yeah. But uh, no, I d that didn't get me going. That to, it didn't have any action. It was just like a stick. You had to snap it, and, you know. I love how truthful you it are. Just, it it just didn't out. work. You know, it, it didn't, I didn't see the fishiness. In you got to yeah. fuck a bait, kill a bait, and marry a bait. What are you going to do? Yeah. <laughs> well, it's just uh, my observations of, of, of everything that go. That but your gone observation on. is appreciated by everyone because you know. you've, you've done it. You've not a lot of guys and, and there's guys starting to do it. Like you said, with the live scope and stuff, but. And I'm not knocking anyone, but you did it a, a minute ago, like a while ago without any of that. But um, and those, like I said, those guys are amazing as well. The Millikens. And well, the what, what do you do if all you know is 80 feet of water? I got to find them and drop my A rig down. What if you take that away? What do you do the rest of the year? It's like a bed fisherman. OK, man. God, I can't wait for him to get on the beds. Well, that's the only time of the time of the whole year that you can catch fish. It seems like because when you're there fishing two, three months for those bed fish, I'm fishing out here off these outside edges and stuff, looking for the big marks. You know, usually a big mark with a little mark next yeah. to it, and I'm targeting that stuff in twenty or fifteen feet. And every time I go throughout the years, day by day, I learn something all the time 
on how they act and what they do and where they go. Meanwhile, you're over here looking for this little white spot with a black thing in the middle and you're the all you're just programmed with your eighty thousand dollar bass boat to go do this. You know what I mean? I see it all the time. It, it you know, it it's it, it, and, and hey, if that's what you like to do, I, I don't you know, I don't say anything. It's just not my gig. No, no, I hundred percent I, I want to learn every day I'm out there what might be something that might be in my arsenal two or three years later where this might have worked this year because i did something crazy uphill you know versus you know over here but i'm not going to go in and do try to catch a fish all right we can get some questions you got a good one it looks like you guys are typing like Um, keyboard warriors over here what do you got going uh gabe chavez has asked a couple times we finally can get to it here um do you think ever that uh, Big Bass or Bass in general won't know the difference as much on what's real or what's fake based on so many people throwing swim baits these days? They got a long way to go, man. Yeah, I don't. It won't be in my lifetime, I don't think. But it it, it could happen with the way technology is. Because you see some of those electric baits that look like yeah. fucking real, dude. Yeah. On the bobber, they're just swimming in circles. Yeah, that does look real. Yeah, but, it's right. real, but the fish. But paint job right. and everything, they know. They scent. You Just know, everything has that. something to do with I can, it. We can't talk about scent. We already talked about it on other podcasts. It's coming out in two weeks. We can't talk about it. Okay. The one he called in on. <laughs> yeah. What? Do you ever... <laughs> <laughs> we cut the bad parts out, but yeah. <laughs> I like scent. There was a question. I can't find it right now, but it we'll was... We'll find it. If you write it down, we'll, we'll look back and find it. It was basically, is line too big once you get to a certain size of a bait? Like, if you throw in a giant bait, does that heavy line make that much of a difference? I th- I think it does. I don't use braids uh, on the freshwater except for frog and buzz baits. Then I'll use a braid. If I'm fishing ocean, then I fish the uh, the spectra with the top shot, tuna, the same thing. It's, it's the way we do things now. Um, when it comes to swim baits, I think too heavy a line restricts it restricts the action um i in my opinion most of my baits are within the realm of 20 pound tests and i have never had a bass spool me i've never had a bass fight like a tuna i've never had one i've had to chase one down once you know and back off my drag maybe two times in my life but uh, very seldom do i ever get broke off by a fish when I'm using my 20 pound test line. I see the only time I would bump up to 25 or even maybe 30 is if you're going to do striper or throw like a 12 inch bait or something like that. Then I definitely would have to bump up just because of the cast ability. But, uh, I, what striper baits you like using that one right there, man, that one, it kicks the shit out. (laughs) Yeah, (laughs) it gets them. Got but one the two fifty just it, they go nuts. No, I, I Shane's broke that down pretty well yeah. too as well. Uh, Kai wants to know if someone wanting to get into the swim bait fishing, what rod and reel and line would you recommend for a newbie? For a newbie, well, I have to go with what you see me fish. You know, it's all there for years and years on video, and you can pretty much get. You just need a heavy eight foot rod. You can get. You know, whether it's, it could be a Phoenix rod, it could be a low down rod, it could be a depths rod, it could be a lot of bait makers make good quality rods that might be in the price range you're looking for. When it comes to the reel, I like the 400 size reel, you know, just because it has the capacity with the 20 pound. When you throw it out, it's not this little spool. And uh, I like the way the retrieve is on it. And uh, 20 pound line. If you haven't learned how to cast good yet, then you might want to, and you spend a lot of money for a uh, hundred, like a hundred and seventy dollar bait. You might want to try twenty five until you hone your skills on casting, because casting is all a a, a smooth motion. You know, it, a lot of guys are real jerky. They 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 get that bait back there, and then they look, and then they they throw it, and it they're jerking it, and it spins in the air. But actually, when you're reeling, as the momentum of the bait comes back, you're just automatically just swinging it right back out there. And uh, you have to learn how to do that. You have to watch people. 
You know what they call it? They call Butch casting and cranking. <laughs> <laughs> That's another drink for casting and cranking, guys. Yeah. South Jersey Fisherman wants to know, did you ever use the Worm King dinosaurs? Yes, I did, and I still have my original one hanging on my wall. And where I got that bait is what, now that you, you said, that's a good question because that's the first big bait that I ever had because I worked in a tackle shop in the San Fernando Valley when I was 12 years old. My dad would drop me off on Saturdays and they'd pay me two bucks an hour and I'd spend it all before I got off work and it was Bob Sands Tackle, oh, original wow. owner. His name was uh, uh, Abe Wapnick, was the original owner of Bob Sands Tackle. And uh, I think it was in 85 or 87, they had already made the Worm King. And then Marv from Worm King came in one day and he had these, these 10 inch trout that were rigged gnarly and wanted to put them on the shelf and he did. And that was my day's pay was one of those. <laughs> and I, I threw it and I got followers and I was like, oh my God this is interesting yeah and then i realized that they wanted big stuff and that's when i got online and i found a big musky spook you know it was about that long do you remember the name of it a wooden one the no. name of that spook no. no no i never found one but to this day hold on he does big d is that what it was oh they took my name the big d the little d <laughs> it was big and the big uh, dicker painted it like a trout <laughs> and uh at that time they had caught that uh 20 pounder at the upper lake trolling the rapala oh, and uh and then that's when things started to Pick evolve yeah. into what they were we didn't have the rubber baits yet we had you know rapalas painted like a trout and they looked like it looked like your wife did it with nail polish. And, <laughs> and then they would. It does look like that. Yeah, they did. Like and so then they'd much. paint them with varnish and they'd yellow. <laughs> and, uh, but I caught fish on them. I still caught fish on them, you know, but not, not to what I caught once things got dialed in. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's baits out there that I've never heard of somebody catching a fish on until Butch remade it. Well, there's shit you guys have told me, both you and Butch, like, I talk to Shane a lot. He's a good buddy. Like I, and there's shit he shows me. I'm like, fuck, dude. I would never think they'd catch it. You know, his anyone pores, catch his pores. They're amazing. Yeah, yeah. Well, you've been doing it. I mean, you've been doing it forever, and you got to. You like to figure everything out. You know, I knew you know I was. Saying? I knew I was in the right place when I started to get interested in making the molds because when I walked into uh, one of the. I walked into a place called Silpac, and when I went in there, I looked in their display case, and there was a swim bait on display mold that who somebody had given them. I think it was the Sean Donovan's Osprey, and they also had a Castaic bait in there, and I knew I was in the right place to buy the right materials. And then I had to ask a little bit of question, and then I learned myself uh how to do things you know and and i've refined it because you know to make there's some baits cannot be made production wise because of their analyzm i guess you could call it the uniqueness of it you know like if you took this bait right here i i like to wash my mold i don't like straight lines i think that looks corny Okay. So when you say wash it, what does that mean? Butch? Well, you have, you have to make different colors. And so you want it to like mix. You want and scale. You want things like that. But this bait right here, if you look at it. So you can hold it up this way so they can see it. Okay. You don't see the lines. Everything blends in no just like lines. a fish is supposed to blend in. No hard lines. And then the original pour has a, you know, a bit of a flake on it. And I can do that with black or whatever. And, and, uh. They just, they eat the crap out of this kind of stuff, you know, and, and I, you know, I, yeah, they'll eat a Renowski once in a while, but they'll eat mine more, <laughs> you know, I mean, really, you know, I agree. It's, it's, you know, it's just the way it is. Butch gave me some bluegills like 20 years ago. The ones he makes. 
His blue. Yeah. Were I they the dead gills? The big, the the ones that you 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 had actually melted the lines into. The yeah, side. yeah. Dude, I took those to the fin, and I had two and three pounders choking those down so deep that I couldn't even get them out of their mouth. Like, yeah. And now it's refined. Yeah. It's it's now I can pour them, and I got them perfect. To see it, see a bass that small swallow a bait that big. Yeah. Yeah. Damn. They, they thought Good it bait. was real. Yeah. yeah. No. And you don't need a lot of when it comes to making those. You know, these guys, they all want to paint these bluegill, all these crazy colors and everything. But if you look at a smaller bluegill, usually he's sort of pale, beige back, you know. He doesn't really have all that, that fancy color yeah, to him yeah. yet, you know. And that's, they seem to, you know, they're not bull bluegill. You know, bull bluegill aren't this big. Do you think that they'll bite the big bluegill or like the bigger yeah. bluegill baits? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like when those those no, big bluegill not baits. Not the one pounders, but yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, and I've always wanted big baits, but, but, you know, and I've said that to some of the, the bait makers that were making baits at certain times and they, but they, they said the same thing, small cells, you know, only a handful of guys are going to want it. They're scared of the big one. They don't want to take it. It's well, it's like, (laughs) like the 10 inch HUD, take the 10 inch HUD, for instance, you know, thought about having a 10 inch HUD right not long after the eight inch HUD came out, but it was like small cells and only a handful of guys are going to be buying the 10 inch and actually if you look at the situation uh if you took it in in a in a ratio they they a lot less guys will buy a 10 inch for some reason but they they get it's an attractant i mean they they they're drawn to that thing it's a good bait they want to they want to know what's wrong sorry i had i think something got fucked up okay i'm sorry that they want to know when did Butch and me meet each other. When did you guys? When did you take well, this little kid under your wing? We I, met on the west first get on west ramp <laughs> on, on, on the dam. <laughs> on the dam, we bumped into each other at Bob Sands occasionally, but we bumped into each other. He knew he knew who I was, yeah. but Rob, he didn't really know. But then Shane educated him a little. Oh, bit. did you? Because Shane, it, it, for what I mean, it you guys is, gotta remember Shane and Rob like. Uh, as soon as fucking Rob wants to come on, he's gonna. We'll have a cool striper yeah. roundtable when he comes on, uh, when he has time. But uh, Shane and Rob are really good friends, and they're like homies, so like they have great stories about fishing well, together as well. They had the passion, and yeah, and they they like to striper fish a lot off the dam. And we actually and, listened. Yeah, and he had the. He, I still have his bait, his striper special. It's still wrapped in the foil, the cellophane that you gave it. If you ever want but the it three back, guys, so I, I know like, it means more to you. But it's uh, your very. It's it never got fished. The first day I ever talked to Butch, he had a twenty pound striper. I never fished stripers either. No, nope. we had a striper derby. Yeah, remember that? You nope. you uh I you you've uh, kind of mentored some just really really good fishermen mm-hmm. for Shane, uh, Rob. Stefan, those are like three, like the, the whole trip. So the charter, the cool thing is, is like Butch is kind of like the mentor of these three dudes that are sticks as well. Like Stefan and, and, and Shane and, you know, Robert. Yeah. Striper wise, like they're very good. You know what I'm saying? No, no doubt about yeah. it. Yeah. So know. it's kind of cool to hear, uh, you know, them talk about you sometimes and you go, well, you know, Shane or, you know, you didn't even know Shane. It was the Shane I was talking about. Are you no. like, oh, shit, Shane's going to be here. I, I, like, yeah. I wasn't sure, you know. But <laughs> When I but, caught that cow on the boat last summer, yeah, this man right here is what was in my head. Him and him and Rob, don't be a bitch. <laughs> oh. Don't be a bitch. Oh. Pull on that. Oh. Oh. He did, too. He got him. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, it's cool to hear, like, you've mentored a lot of a lot of people. And uh, just, everyone respects you, man. Like, everyone, I, you know, like... A kid, a guy dropped his fucking beer because he met you. Remember that? He spilled yeah. it everywhere. <laughs> I had a guy I, cry at Toxic when yeah. he met me. Uh, <laughs> the last I, year, I, I was like, you know, I, you got bombarded at Toxic. Yeah. It was like, it was, it was like, oh my god! It was like Michael Jackson walked down the fucking aisle. But you, you know, know? I, I'm not trying to sell him anything. They, if you got a question, I'll answer the question the way that that I look at the world and the way that but you I get look assholes at that that don't because you never stop being you. Yeah, it's but you get assholes that like you know like dudes that their egos get too big, and they think their shit doesn't stink. So, mm-hmm. and fuck those guys. Yeah, well, we, yeah, you know who we're talking about. Fuck you. There's yeah. a lot of guys that are jealous, and 
you know, or, oh, you're a has-been, or you're this, or you're that. Well, that's when I do a, a go do a video, and then I do a name but drop. Why you would know? someone say ha- has-been? Like, I don't That's know. the big thing is, like, haters. The, and, you know, you, you when you stop and look at it, you go, these are 40- and 50-year-old grown men. And there's only a – I can only think of three of them that I saw pop up on uh, uh, when they did the, the newspaper yeah. thing. And they've, they've, they, I have a block list this long, you know. So do I. Because that's how I weed them out, you know. Once I get a guy that says something negative, then I look at all his like guys, and then I chime in on them, and then most of them have pictures of deer that they shot or turkey or something. <laughs> and I go, yeah, I go, typical frickin' hunter. Or, yeah, fuck you, know, you Ryan Block. Another, you know. another, another bait <laughs> no, maker, Ryan's and I just, I just get rid of them. That's the good part yeah, about it. Out of sight, out of mind. And huh? I got thick skin. I could, you know, I could care less. I, I do what I do. If you got something better, then let's see what you got. Hey, they don't. don't you know, talk is cheap. That's that's when I used to get pissed off on, like, the, the when I first got into the... Because I didn't know that you can't win on the internet, for one thing. But I go on to these four. When these guys. The best comment ever. You can't win on the internet. These guys taught me what what the forums were like, you know, and Robert and everything. And and then the guys, you know, you'd you'd be like. And then I I finally started calling them out. I go, you know, you're all a hot shot and stuff. I go, but none of you guys have any videos or any pictures or nothing. What's up with that? Oh, you, oh well, now we have to have video. Lost I go well if you want to believe. I don't. <laughs> they go you would you don't believe a picture of that I sh- that I show. I go you know what? I believe a picture of a guy that's not trying to be in the limelight, but I don't believe a picture of a guy who is trying to be in the limelight because you could see that what we have nowadays is all on video and it's very easy to do. And if you catch that many of them, you can catch at least one of them. And and it won't take long because you say you caught that many of them. So let's put one up. Well, like that's when when the guy called me from the LA Times and he's asking me questions like, you know what the biggest thing I have to say? He goes, what? I'm like, Butch is is the goat to me because he'll tell I'll tell him, hey, we're going to do this toy drive, Butch, or something, whatever we're going to do. Fucking 95 percent of the time you go, "Okay, I'll get you something. I'm like, what do you mean? I didn't ask for it. I'll find you something. I'm like, all right, cool. Next thing I know, you're going, hey, guys, toy drive's coming up. Here's a 13 and a half. I'm like, what the fuck? You know, like, but that's that's where you go like, hey, you get that name. And even if people go like, well, he's fishing his lagoon. I don't give a fuck. Does anyone have their shit locked down like anyone else? No. It's a L.A. County lake, heavy traffic. Anybody can fish there. If you exactly. think there's that many in there, then come on up. Yeah. It's not that easy. Yeah, you know, no, I agree, hundred percent. You know, I, I, come on. I see them get their ass kicked twenty four seven up there. You know, even in the day when they they used to fishing was phenomenal. Oh, I agree. You know, I I knew that I would I would I was going to get them and and they could fish all around me, but they didn't know all the little rocks and all the stuff. Dave Sintrich was that name we were looking for. Of who was it? Was he from? Remember, Dave Sendrich was the Dream Smasher. Oh yeah, that's him. There you go. Yeah. He's Next, a nice let's, man. let's get back to questions. I well, that know. was one thing I, I've learned from him: is you got to put in what you take out. True. In life, right? True. Life in general, get out of what you put Hold in. On, I think you might be bam. Uh, there you yeah. go. Go. So, uh, Next I got one. Chris O. Hilton. Out of the fifteen hundred plus double digits that you pulled on. Drink. What's the most memorable caught or not, actually, out of that 10 pounds? Or well, double digit. the most memorable one not caught that still is in my brain today is a fish where Shane got his big fish and Robert got theirs, on, but it was a couple years before. It was off a place we call Tree Point. I had the Huddleston and we only had a couple of them you know i had them and i used to fish 20 pound max and i hooked a fish off tree point and i know that fish was every bit of the size of dotty because it came up a couple of times and then usually what i like to do is i get them to the boat and if you watch all my videos i let them dig down if i can't get the net under them and then i get them like i get them this fish came in and he was on his side by the time i fumbled around with the net 
he, he got to start to digging on me and then he shot straight under the boat and snapped my line and I don't have too many break me off but the size of that fish was amazing and I've seen three I've seen three of them in there that I know were that big because I let a, a 16 pounder go next to a fish that was swimming around the dock at the time and it dwarfed the fish that was swimming dwarfed that 16 um, and another one I can remember was down at a place we call the Tulies, and uh, that was on a swim bait also and that was back in the early early days uh, and that fish I know was in the dotty size but when I hooked my 19 that's probably the most memorable one of caught because the you know I saw it come up I knew it was giant and um, when the hook po you know I, you always worry about the hook flying out and it did you know because at that time I wasn't fishing the single treble hook on the top I was fishing a single hook with a trap hook and he threw it just like I expected you know that's what they do but uh you know for me you know when i look back on things when you have gopro on your boat now you know you have that wide angle lens and everything looks nice and clear and close but you know back in those days you know they didn't have digital we had high eight tape and then i'm not educated on filming so then i realized i needed a wide angle lens and well then i looked online and well this one fit a sony and actually it worked out pretty good but, uh, you know, with a wide angle lens, you know, you, you know, like if I'm here, the, those things don't look so big, but the, as I go like this, they, they really start to look big. So it's the photograph, long, arm, long armors. Yeah. The photographs are the ones that you see the true size of these fish. When you're, you see the mm -hmm. fat, gushy, thick tails, you can't even put your hand around and the bellies and and stuff like that would you be willing to say that you think that that fish that got off or any other fish was a potential world record yes without a doubt in my mind that was when i thought to myself that i ha might have a shot at this that's what made me sort of stay too you know i wasn't planning on leaving but it just cemented the fact that you know what do you what do i want to go up top for and mess with you guys you guys got guides you got this you got that you're racing all over the place it's a nightmare i'm down here peaceful you know and then eventually once they ran that lake into the ground well then those guys started coming down to fish around me for about they only lasted a year or so did you ever like uh fishing you fish so long you've gone so hard do you ever go like i'm done mm -hmm. like have you had times where you're like i'm over this i don't want to do it anymore nope. no but Never. i've had times when i'd go rather go to work than go fishing like today <laughs> <laughs> yeah uh, you know i mean you know the last i'll give it the last it's been a grind for the you last for a minute. four trips is hard and usually when i try to do something when i do a promo i always do it like a few days before like a podcast or your you know something going on and i'm pretty lucky that way but this last uh couple of weeks has been a little brutal and then come to find out that they had treated the lake they denied it and then the tulies started dying mm, which yeah. the tulies are supposed to be green and you said no they sprayed the tulies and they denied it then i talked to a guy that said yeah i saw him spraying the tulies we got some film so i got a whole i said send me the film he sends me the films you see these guys in the tulies in tyvek suits spraying all the tulies and then I gave that film to a guy who went into the main office that had kept getting told that they didn't do that. And then he let them dig a hole even deeper. And he said, they sprayed the toolies. They did something. They denied it, denied it. And then he broke out the video. And then they go, well, I wasn't working that day. I don't know who authorized this. Oh, they were only supposed to Bluestone. And then... Didn't they do something like that? And then the that, that, guy, that guy, that guy took him up to the lake. Oh, they drove in the truck. And he says, what do you see out there? And he says, look at those tulies. Everything is brown now. And the, the problem was, is the, 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 there was, I counted, like this one patch of tulies, there was 50 bass on this side, 50 on this side. And they were coming in and out, and they were spawning all around there. And the bank guys were catching them at night. But I could see them, because I was trying to catch, <laughs> I was trying to catch a freaking crappie for my, uh, for my depths, <laughs> for the, for a photo for the Japanese to have. And I saw them in there, so I knew there was lots of fish. 
Well, they went in there and they sprayed. There was ducks that were laying eggs, coot. There was a Canadian geese that had fluffed out a spot and had an egg in there. And those guys went in there and they sprayed the crap out of it. And then about a week later down the line, I noticed that there was a bunch of little fry bass floating all over the place, but it never clicked because the tulies were still green. And then come to find out that they had done that and then when you looked at the lake the other day my buddy pointed out to a lake official he says what do you notice he goes i don't know he goes you see any bird life no bird life that's rare for the after bay because right. we have bird watchers we have everything we have loons we have yeah no bird life they just you know it's 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 messed up it's uh it, but you have to adapt you know you got to wait for this to pass and i have no control over it except to you know and those animals don't get to watch late night commercials no yeah. uh if you've used roundup you may be <laughs> exactly guess what right? it's time for bluefin and your yellowtail and your i know huh your offshore time it's gonna be time now for that instead right i'm, I'm thinking of doing an 18 day at the end Jeez. of the year this year God, so, done with those. Yeah, that might be my, <laughs> might be my last one i'm not sure you know i've been I've, saying i've that. said that twice know, now yeah and I've had, you know, every time I go back, I have a phenomenal trip, you know, so. <laughs> like with Wes, dude, that's another stick. I love yeah, Wes Wendunner, yeah. yeah. But that's I, a great bike. I used to come home with, you know, 250s, 300s, God. and then Rob and Shane are like, we'll take them. Yeah. I go, yeah, you can have them, man. <laughs> I go, you know, we're talking, this is this thing's giant, yeah, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah, huge. He comes in his minivan. Yeah, I'll be in my driveway. How many did you have in there? Three? Yeah. Like for, a thousand pounds of fish? For two days. I'll be in the, in the garage cutting fish. There was a well, 300. Yeah. There was a, a 250 and a, probably a two. And then, and then <laughs> was it you that goes, is that the one you caught on the jig stick? And oh, I'm, I'm looking at it going, are you crazy? Yeah. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> no way. <laughs> All night project. Yeah. So but, you know, there's only, there's only so much you can do with them. You know, because you know, you it's a lot of cutting and you everything, give them, and give them away. Yeah. And if you if you have them done, like you could take them to the cannery or to the butcher down there. But like the last trip I was on, I got all three jackpots. I had a what a two fifty, a three fifty eight, a two two ninety something, and a two two sixty. Well, that would cost me like two or three grand just to get cleaned. I, I don't eat that lot. much tuna. I only need one fifty. <laughs> you will <laughs> one fifty pounder. No. Does the wife like tuna? No. Kids? Yeah, my one son does. Really? So you give yeah. him to a lot of tuna when you go? Uh, well, I make sushi for a while, but only, it'll last for so long. It's cheaper to go to the sushi bar. <laughs> right. Uh, Plus, you keep smell in, like fish for a couple of days right? when you're cutting that stuff. Let's keep in question. Uh, so there's, there's a guy up a little while ago. Ivan Lure want to know if there's anything particular you do tips wise for these guys on what to trigger fish when it's following your glide and not committing to you you need to watch that what how they act you know uh if you see one far enough out and you can do like like i like to keep my line oh. so it's sort of looping it's in the water right. with the glide bait because that way when the bait's gliding no it, you could see it pulsing the line you're not restricting the glide from one side to another so when you let the rod down a little bit the glade and you stop the bait's going to glide farther out and and that's what you want to do and if he doesn't react that way then you can snap it and push push forward on the rod and get that bait to turn around and look at him and if he doesn't like that speed it up a little bit and see if he thinks that he's been detected and it's going to escape and then he's going to react on it and if you, that doesn't work in those scenarios then you need to just get that long cast out there and every cast that you make you need to sort of vision in your mind that there is something back there following it and then do that stuff way away from the boat then clear the clearer the water the tougher it is real quick update guys uh my wife caught the trigger on fire and i just went out there <laughs> The so the the tri tips are great, uh, but mm. she caught the trigger on fire because she didn't clean the grease trap, and uh, yeah, it was a big deal, I guess, outside because I wow. smelt it. If you guys, <laughs> you I guys could it. smell, I was like, "What the fuck is that?" And they threw baking powder on it. And everything. Oh. oh no! 
But you the tri tips are. You good. just got that the last time I was here. Did it happen the same time? <laughs> no, you just bought it. You just oh, I got did. It. Yeah, yeah. I just you were got bragging it. Yeah, about yeah. it. Yeah, it's, yeah. You're looking at hey, your Butch, phone. Hey, Butch, check going, this out, Butch. Yeah, look at it. It's almost done. <laughs> Sorry, Rory. Yeah, we got to call Fumi. Is Fumi around? He might be. We should call him after tell him to come down and have some brisket or some tri tip. Break bread. He's only like. Ten minutes away, dude. Yeah. Not even that. Like yeah. five minutes away. He might be listening. You never know him. Yeah. <laughs> so we got one from Mike Murphy. Why is the moon out during the day a deal breaker for him, but not Shane? <laughs> <laughs> they see me at the lake. That's why. <laughs> <laughs> why is it a deal breaker if the moon's out? I mean, as far as why it it sucks to me. Well, they're saying <laughs> yes, yes, if, if the moon's exactly. out, you'll go home, but they see me still fishing. That's because I can't fish. Well, you can't. Yeah. You you have to fish. You you, yeah. you. It's like I said. You only have so much time on this earth, and you have even less time to fish, and you have to go fish when you can, and that's the way it is. And you know, if if you have to go and the moon's up, then have you then, caught them when the moon's up? Yeah, but it's 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 the percentage is just not like not in the five percent or three percent of the time you, you yeah. Went, okay. I kept track of it. You know, it's like this morning. I thought I was going to get bit because the moon went down at about six o'clock. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was thinking, yeah, I'm going to be out there prime time. But nope. that's that's the thing is like it's you got to it, it happens and just putting your time on the water right. That's the yeah. whole. I hate fucking saying that, but time you have on the to water, go. Right? It's like you know you can't. You know if you plan on going. Because your only day off is this Sunday, and you got other things to do all these other days, and the moon is up, well, you're still going to go. I mean, it's not like I don't catch fish, you know. Uh, I just don't get those big bites that I'm looking for. Yeah. You know, that's that's what the way the word should be. Yeah. Uh, growing up, did you ever catch double-digit bass from any city, lakes, or ponds? No, I grew up at Lake Sherwood, and we had northern strain, and I caught fish up to eight and a quarter pounds out of there, uh, a couple of them, um, and I didn't get my first double digit until actually I was at the upper lake at the beginning, but not at the very beginning, but I got my first one there fishing with a cousin of mine. And he had some fish going, and he was fishing crawdads. And that's where I got my first one. But when I got down to the after bay and I started fishing that steady, well, I was throwing a, it's an old school lure called a Shannon Spinner. It's a double twin tw- tandem blade, has a black bucktail skirt. And I used to fish it with a black uh, Uncle Josh or Pettigo pork rind, uh, <laughs> you know, a U3 or a U4. And sh- Sure enough, man, I was down there, and I was reeling that thing in and saw that big bass coming behind it, and I stopped it at the boat, and it fluttered down, and he ate it, and I put him in the boat, and that was it, man. (laughs) That was the beginning of everything. That was the beginning of everything. That's a great, great... We're going to open this one up right here. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Is it a shitty one? It's a good one, man. Shitty. Who's it from? Crown. Crown 951. Crown it's Town probably someone Corona. you don't know. Yeah. How do you feel about people who live next to world class bass fisheries but still fish private ponds? Ooh. You know, uh, if that's what you get half the fish, your private ponds, then, then so be it. You know, I mean, the guys, you know, I mean, back in the day, you know, you'd see all these guys that were poaching the parks at night and stuff and holding their fish. You can't be in there after a certain time, but, you know, you can't call it a legit. I I, I just don't see that you could be, if you're fishing private lakes and stuff like that, I the accomplishment of catching one out of a regular lake versus a lake that I can't fish and and everybody i don't think is as is as good you know i i just feel much better catching it out of a public lake be, only because of where i am right now and the way i've always been you know Makes uh, sense. because i grew up on a lake where i sort of had the world by the tail you know i could fish at night no one else could you know and i would we had what they called a fish box and i would catch fish at night and you know my bass and i jug for catfish at night 
and uh no way yeah yeah i know you can't do that but i did it i take a <laughs> i take a gallon milk jug and i tie some uh construction twine to it with a one or a two ot trouble and put a chunk of mackerel and i knew how deep it was and i'd throw it out there and i'd put like 10 of them out and then i'd write down where they were canterbury's channel fire station norm's channel and then i'd fish until i'd get tired i'd go in i'd go to bed and then i'd get up probably about four in the morning because the lake opened at like six or seven mm -hmm. and i you can't run your motors at night or before eight o'clock in the morning but if no one's there and you live there <laughs> they can't hear them and then i'd go out there and my jugs would be, be scooting across the water man i'd try to pick them all up before the public would get on Dude, the lake that's fun, channel huh? catfish and sometimes i didn't get them all i got a good good one from a real asshole i'm sure you know who he is his name's justin hillbilly Oh, huh. Justin. Oh. He said, do you wish you were a, a 250 slide swimmer? <laughs> <laughs> tell, uh, him, tell him to fuck himself. How about that? No, Justin's okay. He's a, he's a, he, Justin, uh, so if you. Although, I might need a boat mechanic someday, so I'm hey, not going to say shit he's, about <laughs> Justin. <laughs> he's, he's one of the best. Not only that, I grew up with Justin. I used to own a bike shop a long time ago, and he used to come to my bike shop and buy parts. Long, like just 20 something years ago. So me and Justin reconnected uh, from. I think that. Justin got all my old AC plugs. Did he buy all those? He's and he's uh, even Jeremy. When you hear the podcast with him, he goes, "You know who's a really good bait maker?" And my who he goes, Justin Hill. Yeah, he showed he me knows a how to, chubby, He knows chubby, how to chubby cheek that he made. He's very good bait maker. You know too, what? As well. He said he sent me a picture. He goes, "What do you think of this?" He sends me a picture of a chubby cheek. This is probably like eight years ago mm -hmm. and i open it up and i look at it and i respond i go 15 years too late <laughs> he's like he just has this oh yeah fuck you justin yeah. <laughs> great idea no justin's okay though. he's a great guy hey triple x x x x x says nasty one he says uh screw a tune 250 he wants to know how much for feet picks <laughs> but she doesn't even know about feet picks yet, dude. He doesn't wear shoes, so he's he's got those feet that will make that money. Sorry, yeah. X, do you know X, what that X, means? Years too late. Do you know what feet picks means? <laughs> so we're gonna break it down to you. We're gonna I like the goat thing. We're gonna tell you about things. There's this thing called OnlyFans. So on OnlyFans, you could sell pictures of your feet. Women do, and they make probably like thirty, forty, fifty thousand dollars a month off of it. Really? They pay oh, yeah. to see their feet. Maybe there, you should there, pay. There you, you go, should, Butch. Only fans, a fucking. Uh, so if you hear the about picture people showing your, their feet for money or farting in no, a jar, no. it's a real thing. That's crazy. Butch's shit, feet man. rubbing a two fifty. No, 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 no. If you just a little little <laughs> snippets of you, here's part of my garage, and just give them like a little eighth of it. Oh fuck, dude! For fifty grand, I'll do that. <laughs> <laughs> There'd be all these dudes right here that'd be. I'll stick a hook. And, I'll put the hook in my toe. Uh -huh. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, you guys got some more. Well, last time I was here, you told me what a goat was. Uh, you did. You're the goat. Yeah, You're the I didn't goat. know what that was. Yeah. That's you. Is this a fake one or a real one? Well, just, add, just ask a fucking question. You know, it's funny. Were, were you prepared when you were chasing the world record as far as having the paperwork and, and everything in line? Yeah. Is on yep. your boat. I had yeah. a certified scale, and we had a certified scale at the lake. I had a fray bill pen at my house just in case that was to happen to keep that fish alive. I upgraded my live well to accommodate that fish because I said to myself that if that ever did happen, I'm not going to be like these other guys that said, well, I weighed it on a bathroom scale, and then I stood on the scale, and then I weighed the fish with my hand in there, and it weighed this much, or uh, I felt bad for it, and I let it go. No, I'm going to kill it. It's going to go in my live well. I'm going to keep it alive as long as I can. I'm going to go to the grocery store. I'm going to weigh it on their certified scale. I'm going to call fish and game, and then after the fish, it, they could do what they want, or I'll put the fish on ice. And if you want to, I, I would have put it out there. If you want to come to my house at this time between 9 o'clock and 1 o'clock in the afternoon, you can see the world record bass on ice and take a picture of it for 50 bucks. <laughs> I, I love that so much that you said if you caught the world record, you kill it. It's fine. I'd kill it. 
Otherwise, you're just you're like all, everybody else that's blown through the world. You know, it's it, if the guy from Japan had let that fish go, how do you know? You know what I mean? So they killed the one in Japan. Well, yeah, sure. Well, that, people knew that. I mean, I didn't know that. There's a lot of people. Well, the that fish. Wouldn't... You got to look at it this way. How long? Do you, how long it's do you think die. the fish is going to live? And then, how healthy are the eggs in a fish that age? So it's all on the downside. Like the next year, the fish could weigh 16 pounds. Look at Dottie. You know, you know, if she weighed what she weighed in the time they picked her up, you know, she was still wet, but she only was in the 16 pound class. So uh, kill it. Uh, You know, other (laughs) as long as if it's a certified world record, you know, I'm going to make sure that it's documented and it's proven. And I would rather hold, send it to fish and game. Or I also had the number to Bass Pro Shop and I would call Bass Pro Shop and say, hey, I have a live world record in Drop my it tank in their right, tank now. right now. Yeah. If you send a, get a hold of Fish and Game, donate some money to them, whatever, get that truck here. You can pick this fish up and display it at your shop just like you did Ethel yeah. from Lake Fork and you're going to draw all these people and I'm going to stand in front of that tank and tell everybody how I caught it and I'm going to make money. On a Debs 250. No, it wouldn't have been on that because that, that was around. that was what it was. But you know, you 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 know, I can't tell you how many of the let go kind of stuff that's out there, uh, and then the the you know, just punch up the hoaxes and uh, you know, there's just so much of it. I don't want it to be a hoax. I want it to be the real deal. No, I get it, hundred you know, percent. That's like a. It's not gonna. It's not like it's gonna live more than a couple more years. So you're not hurting the the, the system at all. You know? It's so big, it's going to die either way. Well, yeah. Marty Wall would have helped you back then. Marty Wall would have been right right there with me. Who's that? He was our game, game warden. Game warden. Really? He yeah. was really good. You work with him a lot. Do you talk to the, the game wardens now? Yeah. Yeah. Who's the good one you guys talk to now? Banks is pretty good, huh? I don't have a her. problem with her. Just her and Marty, the other ones. Yeah. There's one at Casitas now, a young guy, and he's on the beat there. And he's... uh. He's a smart one like Marty because he'll park his car, that green truck, he'll park it up there behind the bushes, and he'll watch. <laughs> and then he'll walk out. He'll he'll do a quarter-mile walk and walk down to greet you or to whatever. To get you. Yeah. And he gets them. And he even – I saw him up there when I pulled in, and he came down, and then we started talking for a while. Hey, he knew you and, fucking uh, were. That's nicest why. Guy, nicest guy in the world. Back in the day, Marty would come down with a fishing rod. He'd be fishing. Yeah. He'd be fishing. Oh. People not even paying attention, and he's going down. As long as you're following the rules, he didn't Never fuck with you. He yeah. didn't care what you were doing as long as you weren't poaching. Yeah, he'd do the walk on what the dam. Well, that's a that's the kind of guys you want as your uh, yeah DFG yep. D- DFW. He was, he was such a cool guy. Yeah, he'd he go, retired. He he, he moved to Texas, he, and then he'd go oh. back after he saw everybody on the dam that was doing something wrong and change his clothes. He had a yellow Ford. And he'd and, fucking and put his go. suit on, and then he'd go down and go, you, 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 and you are in trouble. I heard, and, I heard, I heard a story once that a guy was fishing a cast steak sardine, and cut his line when 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 the game wardens walked up, and they grabbed the rod of the guy next to him and threw it out there and snagged the line and pulled the trout in. No and, kidding. Oh yeah, it's from Justin. Wrote them. Oh, up. there you go. See. <laughs> He just sent that. Chubby cheese. That's him. He's got him still. <laughs> we got one here. Uh, Super Spooker asking the strangest thing you've seen in a bass's mouth or regurgitated in the live well. It's a good one. Rat. And if you've ever caught, caught a bass with a swim bait already in its mouth. Yes, I have. Really? Right. Yeah. What swim bait was it? It was a small swim bait, like a Renounski. Not a BPS. It wasn't. Right? A, it wasn't a big fish. Wasn't a big fish. He won't at all. tell you. What hey, but I'll tell you what I did catch once that blew me away. As I was in line, talking old school stuff. It's that for sure. <laughs> I was in line talking old school stuff about the old cream plastic worm that had the two, three gold hooks in it, and it had mm. a spinner in it. Yep. And I was telling a guy, I go, yeah, when I was a kid, I used to catch fish on that thing, and we were talking. Mm-hmm. Well, then I went down to the lake, and I was, I think I was throwing crankbaits. And that very day, and I caught a bass, and it had one in the corner of its mouth. The walleye Dude. worm. Yeah. And I'm like, wow. Did you, you, did you know uh, Jim Mason at all? A little bit. He, he fished, came on. He, he fished was... on the island tack 
uh, with Steve he was, Kelly. He was me. he's he's older than you. I think he's like oh, yeah, in yeah. Se- late seventies. Yeah, I remember him. He was uh he had a, he had a great podcast too. He had all that. He bring it with him. So he yeah. bring all the dinosaurs. Yeah, he brought everything. the old stuff. Yeah, yeah. I was a good one. I'm like, yeah. oh man, that he's kind of was a Katitas yeah. guy. He did his own thing. He didn't uh, mingle around with a lot of no. the guys. I didn't mingle around with him either. And then there was the click, you know. And then what was you know, the click? There, there was just clicks. Oh, click of people like that. Yeah, out you know, okay, they yeah, yeah. they talk to each other, you know. Yeah, I just yeah. mind my own business and do my thing, man. Do you talk to anyone on the East Coast that you were like, oh, you're kind of like a like an OG like you? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, Not really. No? You don't no. know anyone who kind of did it before everyone on the East Coast? Because that, that's one thing I always ask a question on is they got swim baits a lot later. Mm-hmm. So who was the guy over there that kind of like... Was Bobby D. King? Was it? Was it? He's kind of like the guy over there, like. No, you know, the the weird part about that is, is I went with Kenny Huddleston, probably in two thousand eight or nine. You could have beer. You want the beer? Good. I'll take another one. Okay. And Mandela, we you went. Like Mandela? Yeah. Okay. We went to North Carolina to the uh, Bass uh, FLW. Kenny took me with him. We had a booth, and. We were there for three days, and we sold two Huddlestons. What the fuck? And That's everybody it? that came in looked at it and goes, how much? The word was, how much it go for? <laughs> what do you mean how much it go for doomed. well it go for twenty five ninety. oh my god that's too rich for my blood oh no i'll just use the real ones and that's what they were saying back the then. real they, ones so what was the real one them. at that i think they could buy them at the tackle shop there the huts Shiners. yeah and oh then, real baits like yeah real, okay, so right. they, they it hadn't even hit back there yet you know those guys they they, they it all started right here locally and then we went to the next year, we went to Arizona, and we had the Huddlestons there. And I think we sold, we were in the Swimbait Nation booth, and we sold, uh, uh, I think, three baits in Arizona. And we just figured, well, these people just don't have money here, and <laughs> you know, and they they just can't afford to buy a twenty five dollars swim bait. But we didn't sell shit there. And even when I <laughs> even when I got the baits from Kenny, the first batch, uh, NorCal guys, only a handful of them. I think maybe Gillespie was in, got some. Um, they were clueless, you know, as far as they were they were. The, the Huddleston you is what Paul made Duclos? those guys. Remember Paul Duclos? Yeah. Do you remember when he I caught that fish? Him. Yeah. Do you, you believe he called him? me? Do you believe he caught that fish? Uh, yeah. But I, it, you know, the when you have the fish was caught later on. You know that, right? How big was it then? Fifteen something. Fly rod guy got it. That's sixteen For, more pounds than that. Or I'm sorry, eleven more pounds than that, right? Uh, well, when Deluscos got it, he was caught it later on. Twenty something. And then they drained the lake. You know, I from what yeah, I heard. Yeah, no, no, I just always I ta- wondered I that. I talked to him. I didn't, you know, I didn't deny or anything. But it, it's, you know, it's the same story when you're when you have the passion to do something and you're looking that maybe you have a shot at a world record and you see all these these records pop up, whether it's in San Diego or whether it's it's the fish up in NorCal, and it's all the same thing. There's no legit they're bass fishing they're fishing swim baits but there's no legit confirmation of the fish yeah you know kill it weigh it at the grocery store give it to the fish and game and have a world record you know do it otherwise it's just it there's just it could be it could not be you know just because a guy is nice doesn't mean the fish weighed I always wonder that because I feel like I feel I feel like a lot of guys back of that. Guys. I feel a lot of guys in my animals. <laughs> Thanks, fucking guys. guys, man. Yeah, guys. Shane and Phil over here filling me up. Um, I feel like people support that Duclos. Like they go, I believe him. I he believe was a him. nice man, and, and he they seemed real sincere. And the picture when I was like, it looks legit. It's yeah, fuck. You know, it's a nice fish. Dan, so, like what Danny said, it's one of the biggest fish I've ever seen photographed. So that's the, the but, thing is, like, no one really talks about that. I tried talking about that on 
the podcast with Jeremy and everyone, the live one. But it was hard because we were doing a Delta roundtable. That wasn't the Delta. But I always wanted to know what your opinion might be. And it looked... It the, sp- looked the Spring Lake bass? Yeah, yeah. it looked big, yeah. dude. Yeah. Yeah. And the scenario of how he caught it, and he caught it on the sinking version of the of the chubby cheek, you know, the one off the other end of the mandrel. Because there was a mandrel that made two baits at the same time. One side, for some reason, came out a little smaller. No way. That bait sank. The other one was the chubby cheek that floated. So when I see them for sale, I know if it's a good one or a bad one. <laughs> There's a difference. You know right off the bat. But I want, if 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 that fish is a million-dollar fish... I want to see the legitimacy of it. You know, I don't want a fairy tale. But this is the issue is like, I get he was like a very Christian. Like, did he, he kill it? He didn't kill no, it. No, he didn't kill it. Yeah. Otherwise, it would have been weighed yeah. and displayed. So it's kind of hard for, I get where he's he at. He salmon fishes now. Yeah. That's what he's been doing. He's older. He's a lot older, too. Oh, right? yeah. He's yeah, a yeah, lot older yeah. now. Because I've talked to Don. Uh, he's going to get mad when I say this. <laughs> I <laughs> fucked his name up like four times. I call him Dom Mormon when it should be Osborne. Oh. But I've hit up Dom Mormon a couple times to come on the podcast. <laughs> so I always think Dom Mormon. And we were doing the podcast. I'm like, is this Don Mormon? He goes, no, asshole. It's Osborne. I'm like, oh, my bad. Sorry. <laughs> but, you know, like, uh, Don knows him. So we talked about it and mm-hmm. having him come on. Yeah. And I'm hoping to, like, maybe in the next, like, three or four months going back up there and getting him on. Yeah. So that'd be great. Like, Jeremy lives by him. And I think yeah. uh, Don lives yeah. by him. I uh, I just am a firm believer in the facts and the evidence, and if it's worth a million dollars, if somebody's gonna if they have a million dollars offered to you, and we all know that if we catch a world record bass, it's worth a million dollars. Well, that's that's pretty much sets you up for the rest of your life. For that's a just fish. From, that was just from Cabela's or Bass. Pro. Yeah, that's why it just is like you just let a million dollars go and, and every and, and if you're you gotta a remember swim bait, you gotta you say know. you gotta say at the time because now a million dollars ain't shit so it's especially no now there. it's worthless yeah. Yeah. now it's like maybe a house maybe now it's like 300 I think grand. it's worthless to yeah. be honest with you it's the lure company if you can le- make it legit that you caught it on a on a on a significant lure company that's got enough money then they're going to give you money for the fish. If it was caught on a homemade bait, it's it's not worth anything other than the fact that you caught a world record fish and you can do some endorsements for rods and stuff. But how much can the they, lure how much can they really looking give for you? it? But you know, it's crazy is now is all the tournament guys are like kind of throwing swim baits. Like I noticed else. that. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever had tournament guys reach out to you? Well, I I don't listen to them because they're always talking about their sponsors <laughs> you know they're boring <laughs> hey hey what music I this don't... is what i've said the whole <laughs> what music do you listen to on the way to the lake in the morning he listens to oh, i'm gonna tell him i'm telling you no, he listens to here. thrash metal he listens nah. to fucking this says fleetwood mac we have fleetwood mac what fleetwood else? mac leonard skinner all of those guys. Like, yeah. uh, sometimes Led Zeppelin, if I have to. You Fleetwood know. Mac dreams, to be particular. He loves Black Dog. <laughs> Black Dog's his shit. Mm-hmm. That song? Yeah. Right? That's a great song. Led Zeppelin? Yeah. Yep. Shout out Jeremy, asshole. Take hey. a drink. Jer- every time we make Jeremy Double digit. mention. Double digit Jeremy. Another question is, what do you think about Striper guys? Yeah, all the special kids that fish Striper. <laughs> just striper just guides? Stepping. No, it, it says, what guys, do you think about like guys, guys that, that fish, fish for just Stripers? Fish striper. Hey, Stefan, what do you think about Stefan? He's, uh, he's a real jerk. All the short bus kids. What do you think? <laughs> I don't know. They, they, they're they pretty good because they just stay out of my hair. You know, they're usually out there trolling or doing their thing. You know, uh, they don't bother me at all. You know, I be- it, you know, everybody has to choose what they want to do. And Striper do fight. You know, they are a pretty neat fish to catch. But, you know. Uh, I've been on the lagoon time. one time in 20 years on a boat since that day. Yeah, I stay up. On you top. saw the striper I got at the after bay. Yeah, it was nice. Yeah. You, you, hey, hold on, hold on. I saw the striper when he, Butch goes, "You're out my lake, Nick," and I go, "Oh yeah, I was there." He goes, "Look what I fucking caught." And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> "It ain't that bait right I'm there, like, man." I'm like, "Hey, I love, I love messages like that. It makes me fucking laugh so <laughs> yeah, hard." That was a good. That's the biggest striper. <laughs> and he I've goes, ever "Hey, caught. buddy, look do, what I fucking caught." Do you think caught. when the trout were being put in there that there was a fifty pound striper? 
Yes. Yeah. Just from talking to to I, you guys. Yeah. You know, and and hearing some of the stuff that happened out there, and and there was a couple fish caught. Whether you know, Rob got his on a HUD, but then the other one was caught and on something. We don't know for fact what it was caught on, but that was in the forty pound range. Yeah, you know, I know some of the because Rob has a forty eight, right? Well, I'm talking about the lagoon. The oh lagoon. The, oh shit. You know what the trippy part for me is is that. Jeremy was asking. I see Rob. Robert. Jeremy asked about it. Yeah, Jeremy asked if you think the striper are in the lagoon. We well, have a handful. Yeah. There's, no. they're not. They're harmless. They, they, they. There's a few that come in, but I do. We get like maybe one every couple of years. I do remember Sal telling me from from Bob Sands that they saw forty or fifty pounds. I saw striper. Them. Yeah. I, I think, but Back they, the I think they got washed out in 05. Oh. Remember that, well, yeah, that rain yeah. when it went over the top? I never saw it. Remember I sent Robert down there? Yeah. And I said, look at the dock and watch those things swimming around. And he, he was standing up there going, oh, my God. Yeah. He was talking to me on his cell phone. Oh, they were, dude, yeah. they were big. Damn. There was three or four of them. And they would just swim along the dock on the other side, and they'd be down, and I'd look at them. I thought they were big carp. And then I saw the lines and the schnook head, and I'm like, oh, my freaking God. Have you caught a schnook before? Huh? Have you caught one before? Yeah. Snook? Oh, yeah. No. You got to go back, dude. I'd. You want to catch one? Bond. Yeah, I do. Right here. What do I have in your I'm, I'm going to grab his pocket. <laughs> I'm going to grab that yeah. big nine inch right there. Okay. All yeah. I know is when I'm bass fishing pyramid or castaic, I don't throw offshore if I'm fishing for bass too far because they'll take your freaking lure from you, man. Yeah. Even shallow. They're shallow too, man. The, the rumor I heard growing up was that the people that hated Butch that couldn't catch them down there went up on top and brought those stripers and were letting them go on the lagoon to try to fuck it up are you serious yes. they could have there's one thing i wanted to get what does that, that tell there's, you there's a funny thing it's I good can't. to be the king that's like the guys that are listening to the podcast right now that ask those questions they're they're still glued into the podcast <laughs> you know <laughs> they're listening yeah. otherwise they wouldn't be asking the stupid questions you know <laughs> It's, it, but these are the things that like are, I think the, the thing that I love hearing from you is the old days, all the drama, like the shit that's the shit you guys have done. Cause Shane's told me some stories where I'm like, Oh, this is the best fucking story ever. <laughs> like when you like, say you're on a bite and you have people falling, what are you going to do to end that bite? Tell them about the balloons. Wait. I'm oh, not gonna mention tell it. About that the balloons. Was, that was that you gotta one. Tell that me. one got him going good, man. <laughs> so what? You had a bite going, okay? I, if you had a bite going, well, what did you do to end that bite? Well, I've had. I got a couple ways to end. <laughs> if 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 I know that I can't keep coming back and it's a guide, then I would put the. Uh, I just put bleach tablets out there, <laughs> yep. and the ring. and yep. and you know make oh, make so a pattern, funny, and then dude. I'd leave, and they'd shut that bite down for. That is so fucking they, Then funny, they wouldn't dude. come back for a couple weeks. The bite would start back up, and then I used to take the little the little balloons you blow up. Yeah. Well, your sonar meters, like the the. Oh the, shit! It's like know, the fish bladder. The bladder. Yeah. Okay, so you, you don't have to blow it up real big, and then we. You know, I'd put oh, them on, on different, different sized pieces of line, and then I'd be off in a certain area, and I knew they would come down and meter it so that they could fish their crawdads and stuff. And I just would put all these balloons oh, out my there, God, and they would dude. come over, and and you'd be sitting down the distance, you know, fishing, and all of a sudden, er, they stop. All of a sudden, they're like, oh, getting excited. They put the double anchors <laughs> out, and they sit there all day long. And you're going. Well, they're trying to beat him to the back of the lake. Well, they, they yeah. stop. Yeah, they're all, you know, they, but they were mainly the guides, you know, because they. So they, did guides just. The they guides. Had guides that just did the lower lake. They lagoon. just, they, no, they, they didn't show up till the later years when the upper lake drained out, but they would watch you and then they would go right, they would fish right in your spots. They don't do their homework. Their homework is sitting up on the, on the ridge with binoculars. You know, the, you answer. know, how would you know that this spot was biting yeah, yesterday yeah, yeah. and watching. I've been here all week long? How would you know that that this is where you need to be right now? And no, you came I, right I directly agree. here. The water dog gang. Yeah. Yeah. But we, there was a lot of that. And then the problem with those guys is, is, is that, yeah, they fish in a small area, but they put out, you know, 
probably 100, 150 feet of scope over here, and then they pull that tight. Some of even more. And fuck Another yeah. 150 feet over here, and then they tie them together, and then what they would do is they would, you know, when they wanted to move a little bit, they'd, they'd loosen this one they'd up. they pull fucking 20 yeah, feet and, that way. And now you feet. can't even fish the spot yeah. because you're just going right, you know, you're you're inside 50 yards, and you could feel your, your, your Huddleston coming up over their anchor rope, and you're like, that's... You know, not really? Good. Not good. No. Well, it did piss me off. <laughs> we have we have we some have more questions. Yeah, we have another good one from Matt Denham. Uh, do you think that your swim bait advice for SoCal guys is the same elsewhere, northeast and the south? Do you think it would be the same thing? I think so. I think any place that has trout in it, whether it be northern bass or not, uh, would apply. Because look it up in Washington and Oregon. You know, they're getting – some double digit northerns up there and those guys are throwing cool. some some good swim baits you know they're not catching them on the little bitty things they're catching them on you know legit size stuff you know i know if i go back that's what i will be doing if i was to go and you know what even if it was four or five pounders uh you know it's a swim bait fish you know there's a little little different accomplishment you know, what's the smallest fish you've ever caught on a swim bait on the 250? Probably about 10 inches. Yeah. Small. I showed you mine from last week. <laughs> Small. Who else you got on there? Keep asking questions, people. Let's go. Uh, do you prefer fishing in colder climates or in hotter days? I like fishing uh, colder climates. I have to I, I have to fish both, to be honest with you. But in the hotter climates, I like I like to fish the 250. In the colder climates, I like to fish like the thumper tail and stuff. I really don't have a preference other than the heat. You know, kicks your ass after a while. Right. Yeah. They're asking about your not a choice. It's a Palomar. Palomar. Palomar yeah. Why so? I've heard people shit on that a lot. Fuck those people. Because they don't know how to tie it. Yeah, fuck those people. <laughs> how do you like to tie it? How about that? There's only the one right way, way to tie it. There's only one There's way to tie it. But I heard the knot's and supposed if it's to lay not a certain right, way. If it's not right, when you go like this, it breaks. Yeah, that and the jam are the two things you learn first thing when you're Dude, tuna yeah. fishing, yeah. any yeah. fishing I do. It's the smallest knot you can knot. tie, and to me, it's one of the strongest. I've caught 300-pound tuna. You do it on, on every, every bait. That's it. Yeah. Spectra, with my I tie it mono. at night with my eyes shut. Yeah. You know. It's, what are, do you do? You, you don't fish leader much, huh? No. No. Tuna. Yeah. That's it. Bass fishing, I like direct. I don't. The more knots you have, to me, could be a problem. Yeah. You know. Makes sense. And if you have that right time, right place, uh, something could happen. And look how much time you put in to catch that big fish and something stupid like that you know, bad agree. connection or something you lose them and you you know that's half your life you might have spent half your life to get that bite i might have broke and you're doing something broke off dumb. because i had a nick in the line but i've never had that knot break no not if it's right yeah as long it's got to look like that when it goes around can't be crossed the uh the eye then you're good if it's like that you're screwed over okay yeah do you guys have some more and you questions? Gotta wet it. Yeah, there's a Mike Murphy asked if you still think you have a chance at a double digit even today. I mean, not, not a double digit. Uh, a world, world record. record. World record double digit. Nah, it's there. not in my heart. It's it just uh, you know, it's the it's a white rhino to me now. You know, it, it has to everything has to be aligned. All the stars, everything. You mean you have to have the trout stocks. You got to have the the gene pool in there if they start stocking the after bay and they talked about this last week with management up there if they start stocking the after bay again it won't be long they'll have a world-class fishery look what happened when they put some trout in uh ote which never had them before and el cap it didn't take long for them to start getting giants now they've backed all that off and made the trout bigger and some of the lakes and you know it you know it it needs to be the perfect storm but to me no i think maybe a guy up north might have the shot but from what i hear the lakes are 
So the yeah. last guy up north Pretty that hammered. did it is uh, Bass Jack. Mm-hmm. Jason. Jason caught, what, 18-something? Yeah. And that was, I don't know what lake. I'm not going to even say what lake it was. I know what it was. I know you know what it was. Yeah. But we're not going to say it. I go there. <laughs> I know they're in there. So, uh, but I mean, it's cool to hear that someone's that trying That was my lake of choice um, for me to go to from my house because it's not that far. You know, it takes probably, well, it, t- it didn't. Don't say it. Yeah. Okay. Don't say how long. But uh, Look at Shane. I, there's a time Your to little son over there there's is a making time to, you. There's a time to fish it. And those guys, like I told you before, they all know. They've seen me up there. And I told them straight up. I said, look, I don't want to know where you're catching them. I don't want to know nothing about your lake. You know, I'll tune your baits up, you know, and everything like that. But I'm coming up there and I'm going to fish the lake out the way I want to fish it. That way, if something happens, you don't have to point the finger and say, well, He's fishing my spot, or he wouldn't have that world record if I hadn't have shown him this. How does that, that happen? I don't to want to know mul- none of that. Multiple times, though, like you know, I, like I'll find my you, own. Fish. You you got to think about that now when you go to lakes. It's like yeah, I have to think. Hey, um, I <laughs> I can't talk to certain dudes because I don't want them to think I'm I, grabbing their butt. Well, I have connections. I have a lot of bait sent to me and things like that, and guys want me to come fish in their boats and stuff, and it's like you know. I don't clue me in on any of this stuff. I don't want to know. I'll find my own fish. I yeah, can, I'm I a big it. boy. I got, you know, I can do what I want to do. Nah, I understand. What What's the funny question? Sock check. Somebody want a sock check. Sock check, but he's too down. What kind of socks do you have on? No socks. No socks? He's too down, fool. Yep, no socks. Here socks. he goes. Oh, he's no socks. We're in Toby. California, man. He's yabba dabba doing it over hey, here. Hey, we're in killer California. Stuff. We're in California. Actually, <laughs> actually, one of the questions that keeps coming up is they want to know what makes your spinner bait so special, and is it double willow or? Double Colorado. Yes. Double willow, uh, five, big ba- big one, 4.5 small one. I think it's more the color than anything else. You fish them, right, Shane? They work. They work really good. They get mm. they get they get big ones. Robbie too. caught a big one. Uh, he put a picture up of a yeah. big one. No, I've caught right fifteen pound bass on that. Sp- I gave that spinner bait to a kid in line that asked me about catching bass, and he walked down to the rocks in the morning before the lake opened, and I watched him, and he caught a thirteen and a half right oh, in front of me, fuck. and then the next day he showed up. And he walked down on those rocks again right in front of me, and he caught a 14 and a half, and he'd never caught a bass in his life. And I stood next That's to him awesome. and caught a 10 and a half so on the awesome. spinner bait. So how, how and he never you... came back again. <laughs> <laughs> you never saw him again. What is your what is your preferred way to fish a spinner bait? So, like, when I met the spinner bait with my uncle, like, he's a he's a tournament guy. He said, hey, look for stick-ups, throw, throw through mm-hmm. the stick-ups. I'm like, all right, cool. You probably want to either drag it like i know it's a fish it's a finding fish tool so do you like to throw it over humps like what do you like to do i fish it everywhere you know you if you if you learn if you can master a spinner bait you can master a swim bait not a not a glide bait but like like a rubber bait yes. like a huddle yeah, 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 yeah. because it's the same thing because a spinner bait you can throw it out and let it sink down to the bottom and you can slow roll it you can hit a weed and then snap it. You can mid depth, you know, slow roll, barely let it flutter. You can burn it on the top. You can do all these different things, you know. Um, you it make you a better fisherman to be. If so, you, if, if you're you gonna give that. someone a suggestion, like if there's something you need to learn, maybe it's a spinner bait. Spinner bait. Yeah. If you want to be a good swim bait fisherman, uh, plastic at least, you know, like figure mm-hmm. it out, like. Throw a spinner well, bait, a true right? swim bait. This is a true swim bait yeah, right here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, the word swim bait just came along with everybody else. So gl- a lot of people say glide. But, a glide looks like a swim bait, but they call it a swim no, bait. No, it's, it's a glide bait. There's big baits, glide baits. There's wake baits. There, there's different names for all of them. They just lump it all into one thing. Yeah. So you That's should put bait. on your hat swim bait, glide bait, <laughs> fucking everything well, bait 24-7. 
Technically, yeah, <laughs> but actually, it should be trophy bass fishing twenty four seven. It should be big dick and motherfucker that catches right. them all. Yeah. Bigger than your mom's side, George. <laughs> yeah. but it's just because everybody's lumped it into that one category, you know. So be it. You know what I feel like it should be? It should be big baits. Big baits. That's what it should That's be. It, yeah. Not in my wildest dreams, because back then I felt like 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 the black sheep that I thought swim baiting once swim bait nation came on that it would evolve into what it's evolved into let alone make it that you're getting a paycheck but you got to remember not even evolved into that you're like the guru of that you know what I I'm like I like to think that I helped out a little bit on, with making hey, it popular guy, I would watch guys stand on the shoreline and not, watch him just watch him for hours I, that's what I'm trying to say is like, do you, you, I don't think you understand. Like when I told you goat and you're like, I don't get it. it, it it's a, a, hey, I don't jack a lot of dudes off. Okay. But I'm going to jack this guy off. He's probably the, the I, I'm going to say he's the guy. The only reason I say that is because uh, to be a good person, he, he's a amazing swim bait fisherman. He works with amazing companies. He, anytime you ask for help. Like, and this is what I, and another thing we told the story, like, I'm like, Hey, he's like, uh, tell me about the story about Butch. I'm like, all right. I told him the first thing I told you was like, you're still catching him. Second thing was like, Hey, um, this is what I care more about. And they go, what? I'm like, I had a toy drive and, uh, you know, people bring toys and it was cool. Butch shows up with seven fucking bikes, bro. Seven fucking bikes. So to me, it's like. This dude loves fishing and he loves to make sure that everyone's happy. Like kids, kids get what they need. So to me, it's like this guy it does it all. Like you guys, if you guys are YouTubers or whatever, you should look at what this guy's doing. And if you're going, oh, you're just jacking butch off. Yeah, I am. So go fuck yeah. yourself. You know, like I don't give a fuck. And uh, there might be other podcasts where it's like, oh, Big Bass is bullshit. Well, yeah, it might be. But these dudes are the punk rock DIY guys that I communicate with. So to me, I, I, I communicate with dudes like you or, you know, Phil, Phil throws everything, you know, but we, we understand like Butch, uh, people look up to him. So it's, it's, it's cool to see younger kids, younger generations look up to a dude like that. Well, there's, that's what I like. There's guys out there that will do their thing and turn their back to everybody else. I've known him for almost 25 years. And I've never asked him for anything, but every time I had a tournament, black spinner baits with copper blades. Every time I had a tournament, he he offered me a handful of baits every single time. And who, you got to put into the pot do? what you get out of it, you know. And I I truly believe you do good things, and good things happen, you know. Like, you know, like when I used to ride ride. You know, it's crazy. Robert. It's like it's like manifesting. I know you don't know anything about it. My wife's so into it. And I hate it. Manifesto. Manifesting. She, you guys fucking know. I know you know a bitch. <laughs> people go like, if you do positive fucking yeah. shit to no, people, yeah, yeah. like, you know, positive things happen to you. And yeah. I'm like, I get it. And she's like, oh, it's this whole thing. I'm like, I don't know what the fuck matters. It's stupid as fuck, whatever. But you make a great try tip, lady. So I'm going to listen to whatever you say. So, I mean, it's the same shit as like, do positive shit and positive shit will happen to you, right? Yep. Right, I think so. You should have seen Shane about what was it last year? He was having some bad luck. Oh, I and I go, I got. <laughs> I, I talked to him on the phone. I go, I got something for you, man. That'll change everything. And he he doesn't know what's going on. I go, meet me at your meet me at work at your work. And I drove over to his work. He he comes out. I go, I'm out in the parking lot, man. I hand him a smudge kit. Dude, that was like, a cool. I I still got it on my boat. <laughs> yep. Got the the shell, the feather. I go here. Here's a Butch Brown starter kit. <laughs> uh, He's like, off he goes. But that's that's the shit that's you know like it's that's, those little that's things. Bu- yeah, that's Butch. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So it's cool to hear from a dude that uh, means it. Because I I mean, troop. I've done two. This is 250 episodes. 250 I'm, and the yep. 250. That's why I wanted to have yep. you on. So I'm like, have I done bullshit motherfuckers on this episode? Yeah. Do I know what I'm talking about? No. But I can call bullshit real quick. 100%. I, 
I could tell when someone's a bullshitter or like they don't give a fuck about anyone else and they just care about themselves. Like I get it, but uh, it's cool to have guys like you on or like uh, you know like Rob, like b- everyone, Stefan, like these dudes. I've had a ton of dudes that came on that are amazing, and it's cool to have a. Uh, another thing is have you guys on, but. If we're done with the questions, what I want to do is, uh, why are you laughing at me? Fuck you. Oh, but also you guys are cool. <laughs> no, except yeah. the guy with the red hat on. Fucking Trump supporter. Fuck him. Maybe Rob would be more comfortable if me and Shane were standing next to him. Yeah. That, uh, there, there's so, a lot hey, of history there. Can you look through these questions? I want you to pick one out on the users. So just read through them, scan through them. Um, do you remember anyone that oh, popped there, out? There's one more question I wanted to ask. Then do it. When it's windy, do you see a difference with the wind in your back or in your face? I like the wind at my back. Yeah, all the time. Mm-hmm. I don't like throwing against the wind. I like wind at my back. Pretty much all the time. So now we got to find a winner. How many pages do we have? A fucking Some dumbass is asking, too, if not California, if you think BWO will kick out another world class. But I think you already answered that before. Say what? BWO, do you think BWO will, will, will Japan? Do, if not BWO will kick out another world class. You know what? They're in a, they're eradicating the bass there. They're in they're in deep trouble. Really? Yeah. Really? Yeah, they you got they have bins there. Pretty you, tournament, right? Tournaments or you catch a bass, you got to throw them in a this trash bin. Really? They, yeah. They don't oh, they, they it's eating their little you know, their little schmelt that you and they, me use for bait. Yeah, they yeah, they yeah. eat that the crap. I guess they make these they fry them up and they're like chips to them. Fuck that. The wagasagi. Oh yeah. 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 Kind of no. like the minnows keeping the water from coming yeah. down. They still have. It's a big giant lake though. But uh, you know, when you when you look at the story of how that guy got that fish and how he was feeding him bluegill all the time. What? You you didn't hear that? Hold on, we got a whole other story, guys. Back you didn't in. read the story? No, I didn't read it. I don't fucking know. But you tell me the story. He. From what I read, he knew where that fish was, and then he would go in, and he'd have a feed bunch of bluegills, blue gills, and he would just toss them out there and 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 feed this fish for quite a while. You know, maybe what weeks. What did he catch know. it on? He caught it on a live bluegill. Wait, you mean the biggest fish he caught on a live bluegill? That fish from Biwa came on a live bluegill. How big was it? 20? 22 and 5, roughly. But once he got that fish trained to eat the bluegill all the time, then he put a hook on it. A hook on a bluegill. Yeah. yeah. It was a live bait, though. Yeah. Fuck. He didn't catch it on a swim bait. He may have used a rod made by a swim baiter or something <laughs> like that, but he didn't catch it on a swim bait. Not from what I read. I'm going to tell you what. You're the big swinging dick around here, Butch. I don't know about that. I think you are. You need to tell my you... wife that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure she'll tell you different. <laughs> you say ask the sunbather. <laughs> uh, you guys are crossing out questions. I see yeah. it. Hey, a lot of dickheads asking questions. We're going to call you nickheads, not dickheads. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to have Butch look through the questions. I'm going to announce who's going to be the best question for everyone. It's going to take a couple minutes. So maybe you'll watch us drink beers for like five minutes and talk about bullshit. I got a lot of things happening so I can promote things. So don't worry about it. I got something with the Thumper Tail coming out. Oh, too. then we can talk about that too. Yeah, yeah. the guys want So wanted, go ahead. Go um, ahead and talk about Thumper Tail. They wanted to know uh, if the Thumper Tail would work on lakes that have only shad in them. Yep. Or ones in the is actually ask about it. It works at the after bay. We have no trout stocks. We have nothing. They eat it. Yeah. Uh, and anyways, what talk about the thumper tail? Yeah, do the whole promotion. We right? stopped production of the thumper tail because there's too many colors, and it wasn't the way that I like the bait to be. This is the bait right here. This one's probably the one of the colors that's coming out, and I call this one Ogashi trout. Why so? Because Fumio liked it. It's his favorite color. God, we, I'm gonna text Fumio him right Ogashi. now. Ogashi. Anyways, uh, what we've done now with the bait is it's rigged with 90-pound wire in the front instead of 60-pound. comes with a 3-0 hook on the back, which is a little bit bigger than what was on there before. You know, what we made originally is what I fish all the time. 
I do fish this now, but you know, I like to be a little stealthy. Um, the insert is powder coated with clear, so it won't turn that white color anymore. It's super, super soft. Okay. And uh, we're only going to be making it like in limited numbers. So what you're going to get on the first time that, that they're sold, which will be in about two months from now or a month, you're going to get a carp color, which I don't have it here. And you're going to get the Ogashi trout. And that's there will probably be about 1,500 of each made. Tackle Warehouse will have them and some of the other places. And that's, that's how they're going to be sold from now on. We're not going to make 50 different colors so that you have to store them. And uh, the tackle shops have to put them on the shelves and stuff. They'll just be made specific colors that I design. And there'll be 50, maybe 1,500 to 2,000 made at each drop. And that's how they're going to be sold. But now they're all going to, my specs are that they all have to be super soft. And they have to come with this new VMC short shank hook. Three aught black. And that's the deal. So this is the generation two. Anyways, that's it right there. Ogashi trout, sort of green, and it has a little blue in the uh, blue pearl in the green. I catch a lot of fish on that. I catch fish almost all the time on that. So this when is this going to come out? I don't know, probably at about um, two months. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and there are all, the nose is all welded now. Where the uh, bend in the wire is, it's not twisted, and it's not just bent. It's welded. All right, we so got a winner won't right have here. Any CG. Joe Geta. Joe Geta. He doesn't believe I'm live. Joe Geta is one of my best friends. I love him. Uh, Joe. Joseph Gata, we are live, you son of a bitch. Do you have any questions? Let's see. I'm going to text him. Hey, do you have any questions, fuck? Because we are live, buddy. Yeah, I hope your question's stupid, too. No, he's an amazing guy. I love <laughs> I him so he much. He's the best. But I hope his Joe Gata, I, if, if there's anyone you got to talk to at a tackle shop, I might be jaded. I'm really jaded because performance tackles my they're they're my boys. I love Higashi. Uh, he turned me on to calico fishing like when I was struggling. I didn't know what I was doing. It was me and my buddy Whack. Uh, I went into performance tackle and I said, "Hey, I don't know what I'm doing." My uncle told me you guys uh, you guys could help me out, and I went there and Higashi told me um he told me uh yeah. Uh, what are you doing? And I'm like, oh, I'm throwing, you know, uh, I'm throwing in the kelp. He goes, okay, here's a jerk shad. Here's a, here's a, uh, here's a sled head, half ounce. I'm like, all right. So I remember going back to Crystal Cove. That's where I was fishing with whack. And then we started pitching into the kelp and it was like wide fucking open. It was amazing. So, uh, that's one tackle shop that, uh, I've backed since day one. Uh, they're, they're, they're great friends. I think Joe might have a question, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna call him. I know him and Purcell ask him. wants to know why uh, Lisa Ann keeps blowing up all the who does all the comments. Lisa Ann, who's that? <laughs> why don't you ask him? <laughs> who's Lisa hey, Ann? Don't have, don't don't play dumb. Your wife's not on here. She's one of those, <laughs> those Instagram call girls. Is there a Lisa Ann? Really? Lisa Ann? Huh? Lisa Ann. There's two first names. Never trust somebody with two first names. Lisa Ann. I don't know who that is. You guys are being fucking assholes. She's probably from Texas. I <laughs> like. <laughs> <laughs> you guys are assholes. Oh, <laughs> Look at <laughs> even Butch took his fucking headphones off. He's like, I'm not fucking with this. Uh, let me wow. call Joe. It's all from we'll Texas. <laughs> We're done. We're done. Uh, let's uh, let's call the winner out. So what I need to do is, if you're listening, uh, give it to Butch. You gave them the, the name. This is who's winning. CG? CG. Who's Can you CG? hold up the bait, please? It's that depth right there. It's this your depth. Yep, it's yours. 
CG. Winner. Yeah, boy. Who's, that's the name of the guy on there? Yep. So I'm going to message him. CG, if you've seen this, uh, you know how to get a hold of me. If you won and your name's CG, please DM me, email me at castandcrankpodcast.com. Show me your legit profile. Who do we got? What are they saying? That's an emerald trout. That's a nice bait. <laughs> One of your boys, I am JFC. Said he'll pay you twenty bucks to fish the Senko for an hour. The Jeff, <laughs> fucking <laughs> Jeff, <laughs> Jeff, fucking asshole. asshole. Yeah. You they... know Jeff. He's a fucking dickwad. Hey, twenty bucks is twenty bucks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's and you don't got to show your feet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I'm gonna say thank you to uh, these two guys that helped me. So I want to try to do this once a month, a live one like this. I think it's a lot of fun. Uh, it won't be like this next time. We'll have the split system in. Cameras won't die. Shane had a good point. Uh, the cameras are over here because it's fucking hot as shit in here. We're cool because we have fucking Coors Light Modelo, but the cameras aren't. So uh, thank you, Shane. Uh, check out Shane S. Morg on uh, Instagram. Smorg135. There you go. And uh, he's a Phoenix Pro staff. Uh, check him out. If you guys have questions about Phoenix Rods, he'll help you out. Check out my boy Phil. You guys know him. He's a piece of shit. I love him. He's my best buddy. And then uh, check out this guy right there. You see him on screen? Seriously, uh, I'm going to tell Butch, if it wasn't for him, this podcast probably wouldn't be where it was. And I appreciate that. Thank 100%, you very man. Much. There's not a lot of real motherfuckers, and you're one of them. So I'm going to tell you that you're a real, real dude. And everything you've done, uh, either coming on the podcast, donating, bringing toys for kids is amazing man and i and people should look up to you because this is the way you should fucking act in the fishing industry there's tons of fucking pro fishermen that you know do mlf dudes and i get it but act like butch how about that act like butch that's it and now we're gonna do one more thing real quick if you guys want to join in with us all these guys have empty beers oh yeah last one who the hell you cg still got some in there is that mine or these yours? These babies are crying. Who's CG? Who's CG? Yeah, it's one of your best friends. I don't know who the fuck CG is. Yeah, I don't, so he's obviously not one of your best yeah. friends. You have Who's a beer? That? That's it's yours. Mine. I'll finish that one, too. Um, do we need more beers, huh? That's the question. Who's you got, CG? You got a Noah on that list? Know. What does it say on there? No. Never heard of her, so. They said uh, CG is one of Nick's best friends. No. Keep catching dinks. I don't even know who the fuck CG is, right. dude. Uh, do you have the guy? You saw the username oh, on yeah. CG. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Of course, it's my best friend. I give. Uh, hey, me and my friends get Nick bit, and you don't. So fuck yourself. Ah! <laughs> That's not my best friend. <laughs> so uh, we have no more beers for them, but me and Butch have one. So fuck you guys. Uh, yeah, you got you got one over there, right? So one more time, double D. Double D. Double D. Yeah. Thank you guys for listening. I hope you like this podcast. It's done. All right. You guys stop it or no? So how do you give the baits away? That CG guy. All of them? No, just the one. Oh, no, the rest are for Patreon. Here, how do you turn this off? Okay. Messages? Really? Is that a lot? Oh, that's a shit look. That was three hours? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck. That's fucking nine. Oh, three hours and seven minutes. So did you get one, get get Mickey from Texas or anything? Fuck that guy, dude. I fucking did you? Did you?